praise his holy name. Blessed is his holy name. Hallelujah. Woo! Well, ha ha ha. Kototo, koto, she payete, shupaketo yo po, she pateo ropo, mande she payateo, mandeo sopo. Well, listen, if you don't know what you're reaching for, let me help you. There is a realm of glory that if you've ever been in a prayer meeting and, and it resulted in you being overwhelmed with the presence of God where you felt like you never felt in your entire life, where you felt like somehow you, 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 you visited heaven but wasn't aware of it because some totally cause the power of God's busting loose on inside of you. That's all I ever reach for when I begin to worship, when I get, begin to pray. I'm not having no common, ordinary sit around, have a sing-along song, kumbaya. He's here. Emmanuel lives and exists on the inside of us. I don't have a squirt. I have a river. Praise God. Amen. Of all heavens available to us, why should we be without it? <laughs> I listen, we are willingly without the move of God in our life. We're willingly without the move of God. People are always wondering, what does it take? What does it take for me to have a breakthrough? All it takes for you to have a move, a breakthrough is a move of God in your life. And a continual breakthrough is a continual move. People say, well, I just can't reach heaven. No. Listen, I'm telling you right now, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Heavenly Father has come all the way to where we're at, pleading with us to just follow Him to come. He's going to, he demands, he demands a, a, a participation. He demands a reaction. He demands a coming at him with everything that was, is within us. And you know what? There's a lot of doubt and there's a lot of circumstances and there's a lot of disappointments. I mean, the earth is supercharged with them. The earth and the world around you is supercharged with everything that is designed to prevent you from being able to begin to interact with the living God. The Father has given to us a special supernatural divine power and ability to run through a troop and leap over every wall. He's given us the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. He's clothed us with everything that belongs to His own glory and power, His own beautiful armor, the whole armor of God, so that anything that Satan would try to do, we just smash it. He's just smash it. I said just smash it. I mean, come on, dear people. Hallelujah. Somebody said, did you see the powers of darkness moving? I said, I sat and looked at the bottom of my shoes lately. Hallelujah. Did you see what the devil is doing? Sorry, I didn't look at the bottom of my shoes lately. Hallelujah. If I look like I'm in a different realm, I am. Hallelujah. Ha ha ha. Sakana chaya Hallelujah. Prada satana mon shangestai. Botoro mon jesi limandaropo. Hallelujah. Vera baya satagi lo bonje kasha ramangeshe o pora. Woo hoo. Ha ha ha. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for the working of your mighty power. Thank you, Father, that you are absolute sovereign and Christ Jesus is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Father, we thank you that you have highly exalted him above every principality and power and might and dominion and have elected and purposed that he be glorified in the midst of your church. And Father, we pray, O oh God, for your mercy that the eyes of the understanding would be opened up unto the masses of your people. O oh God, that they would no longer be consumed by an earthly situation or locked, O oh God, into a human disposition. Oh Lord, but instead they rise up in the power of your strength, in the mantle of your divine glory that they take a hold of and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Woohoo! <laughs> Hallelujah! Hey, praise God. You can be seated. 
And I want you to learn how to shout and pray. And I'm believing God tonight that every person in this place will get so filled up with the Holy Ghost. They won't have a squirt. But they'll have rivers of ex divine expression coming out of their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, which what, this is what we're believing God to happen in your life tonight. Listen, if there's any one word you want to grab a hold of in 2015, it's to participate. Yay. And so you're just, look, some of you are just going to go, have to go ahead and have to holler till the holler comes out right. You're going to have to shout till the shout comes out right. Because we will have it really learned how to let that wonderful divine glory flow out of them. Much of, what is, uh, much of what we see is a lot of smoke and puff and steam like an unprimed pump. But you know what? We're not going to give up. We know what Father is dedicated to doing. He is dedicating to, 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 he's dedicated to glorifying His only begotten Son. And Jesus set it all up so that His entirety of His glory would be made known and revealed through the midst of His church. And so I have personally taken on my shoulders that responsibility. I know that without the working and the power of the Holy Ghost... That is an impossible responsibility to fulfill. Therefore, I have given myself personally charged to lay hold on eternal life. I have given myself, I have charged myself to lay hold on the living God. I have charged myself to yield to and submit to the Holy Spirit who brings to me all the wonderful dimensions of heaven. Hallelujah. And they grow and they strengthen and they multiply they increase as I participate. They don't grow and multiply and increase as, uh, you know, I just uh, abdicate or go about my own business. <laughs> well, let me just tell you something. You want to know, know how to have God's great wealth and provision for your life? Yeah. Would you like to know? Yeah. Quit making provision for your flesh. Amen. Just quit making provision for the flesh. Quit making provision for flesh and you can have all God's wealth and riches. I'm going to tell you right now. You can have all the divine glory and all the divine power that there is exists in, in the kingdom of God. Just as soon, soon as you start, start living in the kingdom of God and start living in the heavenly realm. I'm going to tell you right. Listen, leaven, the sin of leaven will mess up heaven in your life. You just a minute. Yeah, I'll just give you a little poem so you can remember. The sin of leaven will mess up heaven in your life. So just be done with it. I want you to just be tumbokstakaya masatai, lorosana mindiapoya. The kinds you like and the kinds you don't like. All of it. The kinds you allow and the kinds you don't allow. Just get rid of all of it. And tonight I want to minister to you on being taught of God. This is a weird microphone. I'm sorry. It just... Somebody's going to have to buy us a microphone. This is the weirdest thing I've ever had on my ear. It kind of clamps my ear. And every time I clap, I, well, I guess it's kind of cool. Because when I clap, it gives me a bit of emphasis. I'm just going to have to make the best of it. Hallelujah. I don't know how that happens, but it works. Praise the name of Jesus. So, there's more expressions in tongues than there is galaxies in the universe. And people, I see, I've heard people say for 20, 30 years going, la, 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 la. Come on, people. God wants to enrich you. Hallelujah. Porosatai. He wants to diversify you. God wants to diversify. He don't want to pigeonhole you. He wants to diversify you. He wants you to share in all of his glory. I'm going to tell you, you might not realize this, you don't, because we, reality is we don't realize it because we try too much to place it upon the, the confines of what we deserve. So this may help you right now. You don't deserve anything I'm getting ready to say. You don't, so don't feel too bad because I don't, no one else does either. You don't deserve any of this, but God in his love has given it to us. Now, you ready for me? You ready? Listen, he has made us right now his co-inheritors and heirs of God. People just want to make it till later on. Yeah, it is later on, and it's going to be manifested even in a greater way, but it is right now. And, and the way in which Father wants to manifest it in our life, uh, I would say that very, you know, I, I, unfortunately, I would say that very few people have occupied that room. Very few people have occupied that realm. And I'm, I am determined by the grace of God, I mean, I set a goal for myself to, um, 
It, it, I set a goal for myself that in 10 years, I'd come into the fullness of the measure of the maturity of the ministry of Jesus. Nine years, I've got nine years left. Uh, one year has passed since I set that goal. People say, can you do that? Well, that's well, Paul gave you two options. He said, you're either going to come into the fullness of the measure of the maturity of the ministry of Jesus, and a fully matured man, or you're going to be a baby, and you're going to be constantly tossed around by the activities and actions of men and circumstances in your life. So you choose which one you want. And I would say the best thing to do to achieve a goal, you know what, is to set a goal. Amen? And so, you know, I started talking to you about this about uh, almost 60 days ago. And I said, you're going to read the Bible in 90 days. And uh, I know some people are a little bit disappointed in yourself. Well, just catch up. You know, it's tough. You know, what will happen is you'll decide, you'll, defi you'll find for yourself that there's a whole lot more work to do when you miss days. Anybody discover that? There's a whole lot more work to do because you are behind spiritually. People go weeks without engaging into the spiritual activities. There's nothing more powerful than the living Word of God. There, His Word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's spirit in its life. And we think just because it has become common because everybody has a Bible and you know we we think that somehow it hasn't got the power somehow we we over commonized it I mean I don't even know a real a correct word for it we've minimized it and, and we we've confined it but his word nonetheless is living its spirit it's powerful if by we understand that he framed the heavens by his word my goodness you and I have received a miracle new birth Earth by the word it's about time you and I start meditating on the word understanding how to desire the sincere milk of the word so that we can grow thereby to be taught in all the ways of righteousness to be equipped in all the ways of God and I'm gonna tell you what his word will do his word received in an honest and sincere heart will activate the Holy Ghost will activate the river on the inside of you the Word activates the Holy Ghost. The Word activates the Spirit. The Word, Christ Jesus, is the one who activated the working of the Holy Ghost in our lives through redemption. It works on every single level. It's time now, dear people, to move out of whatever you're in and go ahead and start stepping forward into the things that Father has invited us to participate with Him in. Can you get that? Okay, how many of you are going to do that? Okay, so just start right now. Prophesy. Just go ahead and prophesy. Just start prophesying. No, I didn't say pray in tongues. I didn't say pray in tongues. I said start prophesying. I said start. I just I, I said start prophesying. And and that's that that's pretty close right there. That's pretty close. That's pretty close. But that's pretty close. It's pretty close. But you're still having to activate something in your own thinking. It's close, though. It's good. It's close. At least it was an attempt. It's, it's close. What I want to see is I want to see God's people begin to activate what Father has supplied, an unction deep on the inside that you always ready in, you always built up in, you instant in, season out, of season in. I mean, my goodness, it is a continual flow. It's ready at any moment to be activated. Now, let me show you how you do it. Are you ready? All you have to do is ask the rock. You come to the rock. You, you come to the rock and you say to the rock, Rock, give me water to drink. Ha. And Bodasaya Tatamai, the Zuramasta. Jesus Christ is the rock that followed them in the wilderness. All he had to do is speak to the rock. Nothing's changed. Paul is helping us understand. Nothing's changed. All you still, do, still have to do is speak to the rock. And as soon as you ask the Lord Jesus Christ, the rock, for water, he supplies to us the activation of the Holy Spirit. So what? So that you and I can be filled with the Spirit. Now listen to me. You ready? You ready for this? The more that you continually allow yourself to be filled with the Spirit, the more instantaneous it is for you. The least you do this, the less it is. Or if you're going to do it once a week, you know, once when you and everybody and you know, the crew get together and have a little prayer meeting. I mean, what the bottom line of this? Praise God, you got something, but it ain't much compared to what Father wants for us when we talk about His fullness. It's about time now that you begin to practice the things that are most important to practice. Godly exercise has a whole lot more valuable than the push-ups and the pull-ups and the running and whatever else that you've been torturing yourself doing trying to get your body in shape. It's about time for your Holy Ghost inner man to get filled up with everything that God has commanded. Yeah. Now you're going to have to activate. 
And I mean, I found, I found that it's just so much for people. You might read, a, read the Bible an hour a day. My goodness. How do you find time for that? That's exactly what I'm talking about. It's proof that people don't know how to sit in the presence of God because they never really valued the glory of it, the importance of it. And so, I mean, like, you know, like, we're, like I've been proven to you over the past 60 days, you can read the entire Bible from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21 in 90 days. That means you get to read the Bible four times a year. And all it takes is about 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the night to do that. And that's living in, that's living in a poverty diet. That's like kids in China having one bowl of rice a day. Serious, seriously, it's like kids in China having one bowl of rice a day, one bowl of rice a day. People are on survival rations, starvation rations in the church of Jesus Christ. And that's when they're trying. But what happens when you taste of the good word of God? Ha! What happens when you taste of the glory realm? What happens when you begin to live in the riches? What happens when you begin to live in the wealth? What happens when you put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no more provision for the flesh? What happens when all of a sudden the kingdom of God is more important to you than your daily food, than your clothing, than all the other nonsense that you're participating in that is consuming all your time? I'm telling you right now, give me a man who goes hide away in a cave for 20 years with God. He'll come, if, he was really insincere, if he's really sincere with God, it doesn't have to be a cave, it can be a room, hides away with God, takes a hold of God, hides away with God, gives God his whole being. He's going to come out of that place and do more in a day than the church will in, in a lifetime, in a generation that just continues on with religion. Continues, continues on with ritual and works God, prioritizes, works God into their schedule. Are you listening to me? <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I'm, provo I'm here to provoke you tonight. I'm not here to just tell you the problem. I'm here to give you the solution. How you like that? Somebody said, I don't like them preachers that just tell you about the problem, don't give you a solution. Well, you'll like me because I'm always about solution. I'm going to tell you about the problem so I can in in identify the shortcoming. The in in I'm going to identify the things that are standing in the way. Amen. Amen. Father, take better care of you then you can take care of yourself and he would like to prove it if you just quit being so scared. I'm going to say it one more time to the people who listen on the web as well. Father, take better care of you than you've ever taken care of yourself. You're just going to have to let him prove it. And the only way that that's going to be possible is you're going to have to quit being so scared. People are fearful. I'm going to tell you right now, faith takes boldness and confidence. Amen. Amen. You got to step out there on the water. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, you got to step out there in a realm of abandonment, of the, of, of the denial of the self. There is nothing that so identifies the denial of the self as trusting God wholly. Take now your only son, Isaac, the son that you love, the son of promise, the son that you've based your whole past 24 years of living on, that has been the centerpiece of all of our relationship and covenant and coming off from now on a sacred altar that I'll show you. On Mount Moriah. Huh? Come and dedicate. Abraham took Isaac and dedicated a place for Jesus to come and be crucified. Hallelujah. Ha! Huh? Abraham took Isaac and dedicated him, dedicated a spot for the temple to be, uh, to be built by the son of David, Solomon, so that God could dwell in the midst of his people in a glorious way, not just in a tabernacle, not just in a tent, but in a glorious way. Father wants, Father has prepared for himself. A, a temple. He's prepared for himself a building. You know, you just got finished reading the prophets. I mean, I, I really like to take the prophets and, 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 and intertwine them with reading, you know, Judges and reading 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Sam, 1st, 2nd Chronicles because then I get the answer to their, no, their nonsense because they were constantly profaning the glory of God. God has built for himself a place a holy habitation to make known his glory throughout the earth. It's called the church. And Jesus wants his church back. I love a, I love a, a story that a dear friend of mine tells. As, you know, the Lord used him in a wonderful way in, <clears throat> in touching people's lives in the area of the word of knowledge and, and ministry of the spirit like that. And he was at he, his church. He was ministering. as He's a pastor as well as evangelist. And, <clears throat> and so he was encouraging his, his people to start moving out in prophecy and moving out in the word of knowledge and one of the guys came up and said hey man he said listen I got a word from heaven this is radical I just had a vision 
And my dear friend said, what, what? He's just like, he's going to filter it. Just tell me first before he put it, speak in a microphone. You know, we're live here. Okay, so <laughs> he said, I see Jesus' head floating around. And of course, my friend just like, oh, no. You know, you open up the opportunity for people to start ministering by the Spirit. And you get all kinds of flaky, weird stuff. This guy's got Jesus' head floating around. And so, you know, he just like pushes them back. And they go to worshiping, waiting on God, just standing in the presence of the Lord. And then he feels a tap on his back from the guy. And he's like, oh, no, man, what? He said, don't you want to hear what he's saying? And so my friend said, yeah, man, what is he saying? He's saying he wants his body back. I hope you can hear that. I heard that. Tonight, you know, I'm coming to the meeting. You know, I've had to work all day. I've had to work desperately hard all day. I, I have a deadline to meet by tomorrow. And, um, you know, it's just, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing something for a very demanding school that everything you do is wrong no matter how well it's done. But I still had time to spend with the Lord. I didn't cheat God. Because I discovered, if you don't cheat God, if you put Father first, he'll bless everything you do. If you go ahead and try to make it all happen, you've got to get it all done. So you're going to prioritize God. Let me tell you what, you're going to be living, ch chasing your tail like a kitty cat for the whole of your life. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. You know, but, you know, as, 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 I, as I just finally, I just, you know, I had, some t I had time with the Lord through the day. I, I, I want to make sure I emphasize that. Not because I'm trying to bring, you know, something self-serving. I just want to know. I want you to follow me as I follow Jesus. I don't care how busy I am. I'm going to stop. Okay? And as I told you before, you know, people say well, they pray continually. I wish I could find somebody who prays without ceasing. I'd love to meet them. I would like, I'd like to be able to interact with them some. Huh? But I'm going to tell you right now, if you begin to put, if you begin to set high watermarks for yourself and say, okay, Psalmist David praised the Lord seven times a day. And if you call 10 hours your day, 10 or 12 hours your work day, something like that, that's about, that's about every hour and a half or so you're going to be stopped. You're going to stop and praise the Lord. Daniel, he, pray, he knelt down and, lifted, and opened up his hands towards heaven and praised the Lord in prayer and worship and praise three times a day at nine o'clock in the morning noon and about three o'clock in the afternoon time of the morning sacrifice the evening sacrifice and the noon time if you would do that uh, things would change so i said oh that sounds religious to me that ain't religious man that's 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 setting a goal for yourself to get somewhere in god i mean it could be religious if it, all it is is about you doing something so that men can see you but i'm talking about setting yourself aside to touch heaven i'm not talking about just diddle dallying around and just you know acknowledging having a mental affirmation oh god here i am i just want to know that i know you're there and i just whatever i mean touching heaven i'm talking about I'm talking about you and I were created for his praise. We're created for his worship. When the Lord talked about the salvation, you know what he put on it? He said, I've been looking for this to happen. I've been waiting for people to worship me in spirit and truth for real. I've been waiting for people to worship me, worship me for real by the Holy Ghost, by, by a right spirit, by the, the spirit of truth, the spirit of life. Hallelujah. And at any rate, you know, it was about 3 o'clock. I set everything aside. I said, okay, I got... You know, about, I got about four hours before the meeting. I'm a, I, need, I need four hours to get ready for the meeting. How many hours do you need to get ready for the meeting? I need four hours. I recently anointed, laid my hands on and anointed someone uh, in, in, the, in the stead of Christ Jesus. Laid my hands on them, anointed them with that which the Lord gives us to lay, upon our, lay our hands upon uh, the elders and lay our hands upon those who are separated under the Lord. And I said, the one thing that you're going to have, the big thing that if you want to please God and if you want to step into this anointing and you want to go rich here and you want to make a difference, you're going to have to recognize you're going to have to cut out a big portion of your life every day for Jesus. And, and you're going to wait on his word. And it's not going to be just kind of spot checking this thing and that thing. It's systematic, get down, Holy Ghost, lay something on my heart, study uh, uh, that's birthed in prayer. You know, I discovered it in my own life where, you know, I would just, it'd be in a meeting and uh, getting ready for a meeting and I would just go to prayer. I would, I just, I knew, I read enough books about people who prayed and heard enough stories about people who prayed and how the power of God was associated with prayer. I would just hit my face and I'd start crying out to God, I'd pray. And then as I was praying, I'd start preaching and my prayer 
And my prayer would turn in to me quoting scriptures. My prayer would turn in to me declaring things to God out of the spirit realm. And then all I would do is start writing them down. I'd start writing down notes while I was praying. And then when I got finished writing down notes while I was praying, back in those days, I didn't have a computer. I had a Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. So I would take those words that I would get out of those various different phrases and those fragments of verses of scripture and things that I heard God saying. And I would quickly take those words and I'd look them up, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. I'd write down the verses of scripture. And bang, I got a sermon. Amen. We're ready to go now. Okay, and then I lay that before the Lord and I say, okay, Father, you just say whatever you want to say. Do whatever you want to do through me. I just want to be a yielded vessel. You know what a yielded vessel is? It's a checked out mind. Let me give you that again. You know what a yielded vessel is? It's a checked out mind. Are you with me? I'm going to tell you about a mind of Christ. I'm going to tell you about the mind of the Spirit. Absolutely does not need the engagement of our own understanding and our own intellect. Hallelujah. Amen. It is a wonderful thing to walk in the mind of Christ. It is a wonderful thing to have the mind of the Spirit. Praise God. It's a, that's why you and I are going to have to learn how to function, operate in a different realm. That's part of why, we, that's why, part of why the Lord has given to us the Holy Spirit and with the evidence of tongues because it just is an entirely different rework and rewrite of the way that we operate. And, and we, what we do when we usually talk is we're processing all these thoughts. When the Holy Ghost is speaking through us, it comes right up out of our belly. And we're all, and we're getting introduced at the same time to what God has to say as everyone else says. You listen, I can go back and listen to tape. I went back and, I, you know, I was, I came in on Friday night. You know, we, we, we rushed back on Thursday to get back here for Friday night for School of Spirit. And I praise God for the few of you that showed up. The rest of you, I know. You were moving into deeper things and God didn't have time for us, but that's okay. But nonetheless, I'm only going to move on for that. But at any rate, uh, so I, you know, it was just the richness of the Spirit. I had a mandate from heaven. I had something right from heaven I had to speak. That's why we rushed back, left the grandbaby, left the grandbabies, left, uh, left the family stay out at the ranch. She was going to stay for another two days. And I said, no, I got something from heaven. I've got to go deliver what God's given me from heaven at all costs, Okay. And so that's just what we did. We packed up, boom, we took off. And we got here, and then I delivered that word, and Kay got it up because it, folks didn't show up, and things were all crashed and whatnot. It wasn't live on the web. So Kay got it up on, the, on YouTube by that evening. That next morning, I hit play, and I'm sitting there going, I'm just getting just, I'm getting blasted by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I'm going, ooh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm feasting on the word from heaven that's coming up out of my belly. And, and it has absolutely nothing to do with me as a person within the framework of that which I was given or endowed with through some kind uh, of genetics or through a, or an earthly birthright. This is something that we receive from heaven. It's far more rich. It's far more wealthy than anything else that exists in any other models in your life. It is, far, it is a leveling field. It doesn't matter how stupid you are or how brilliant you are. It is irrelevant. When you start flowing in the Holy Ghost, everybody's got the smarts of the living God, has the wisdom and the knowledge of the Lord. It's a totally different realm. It, uh, forget about all your measurement tools. Forget about all your competition. Who can compete with Almighty God? Com forget about what you think and what the other person thinks. I mean, it doesn't even matter. There's only one rule here. We have to speak according to His Word. That's it. Hallelujah. And, and, uh, and the Holy Ghost trains us. The Holy Spirit trains us to prophesy because we give ourselves to the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. He trains us in, 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 in revelation because we give ourselves to the word. And there, whereas we're giving ourselves to the word, Scripture pops up off the pages, slaps us across the face, and then jolts us with the glory of heaven. Huh? He, he trains us in these things called the doctrines of God, which are the teachings of the Holy Ghost. Because what we've done is we constantly are there before the word and because I'm there before the word the Holy Spirit can come and correct me if I wasn't I don't know how many people get corrected that don't read the word of God and don't listen to the pastor I don't know how many people get corrected as far as I'm concerned they don't get corrected because I don't know any other way that the Holy Ghost will correct you because when your conscience is sued the Holy Ghost is still grieved you gotta listen to me now huh you got to watch out because it's only the Word of God. His Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It's by His Word that He brings redemption. It's by His Word that we grow and mature. It's by His Word that He reproves us, rebukes us, corrects us. And if I don't speak according to His Word, there is no rebuke. There is no reproof. There is no correction. All that is is nonsense. All that is is dysfunctionality. 
Are you listening to me? But man, when you just give yourself every day to the Word, you're just reading. What happens is the Holy Spirit just takes the Word and just lays it right on your heart, lays it right into your face and says, this is what I want you to change. This is what I want you to do differently. This is how I want you to move forward. This is how faith works or whatever. You're missing out on so much when you don't lay your life before God. What is laying your life before God? It's not, are you running with me, Jesus? Because the answer is no. He's not. It doesn't say, give your life. Jesus didn't say, give your life to me and I will follow you. If you want to be my disciple, no problem. Uh, just tell me and I'll follow you. He's, he's told us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. God's not working with you in an earthly realm. He's working with us in a heavenly realm. We're not blessed with all spiritual blessings in an earthly place. We're blessed with all spiritual blessings in a heavenly realm. It's equivalent to walking in the Spirit and living by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Come on, people. Shift it into another gear. Get out your rut. I'll throw you a rope. Get you out the pit. Amen. 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 God demands total, absolute change in every way of our life. And we've emphasized the minor points and let, and let lay the bigger issues of life. We all, all just wrapped up in how we're going to make it through a day without sinning instead of being all wrapped up in the glory of how we're going to step into a greater authority to mandate the word of heaven to all those around us beginning with ourselves. Amen. To step over in the glory realm. Oh, hallelujah. Every revival that has ever taken place was all centered around somebody talking about the glory of the living God being manifest in the midst of his church. I'm going to tell you what you want. I'm going to tell you what you want more than anything in this life. You listen to me. I'm going to tell you what you want more than anything in this life. You want more of the power and the glory of God to be revealed to your life. That's what you want. I'm going to tell you what you want more than anything else. You want more of his di di dimensions, of his glory, of his presence, of his person, of his power. Hallelujah. Revealed to you and through you. Manifested in your life. And I'm going to tell you right now, dear people. We have got it for you right here. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have it for you right here. Hallelujah. You're going to have to trash your own ideas. Audible security. See ya. Dad, you cold? Here. Have this. Here, put this on first. It's wool. Put this one on. Put this one on. It's wool. Wool works better. Okay, and I'll drag this cord around. <laughs> You're going to have to trash your own ideas. It's hard, I know. I'm partaker of the fruit. I'm, a t I'm, I'm constantly trashing my ideas. The one thing I'm better at is now I'm more skilled at recognizing that that's my idea. That's a great breakthrough when you recognize, oh, that's my idea. Okay, trash, delete. <laughs> Okay, we're waiting on the Lord. But once again, I'm going to go back to what I've been trying to say now for the past 10 minutes. <laughs> you know, I said, was, you know, at 3 o'clock, I said, okay, push everything away. And just, Holy Spirit, your church, Lord, it's your church. Bob, you see the desperation of my soul. And you see the challenges that we're facing, Lord. What we face, you know, this is the way it goes down. What we face in this church is what people face all over the globe in churches the opposition that satan runs against god's people stepping in to realizing the the the, the display of the glory of god that's been made available to us all the provision of heaven that we have there's no reason that any single one of god's people on the planet should have any less of an anointing than the lord jesus christ has and had, and it's because, and why? Because he gave it to us free. It's a freebie. It's free. Freely, freely. And the people, you can't ever start giving until you freely receive it. You don't get to give it until you freely receive it. And then some, and then on the other side of the equation, a bunch of people, my goodness, they, <laughs> they're afraid of the Holy Ghost. They don't want the Holy Ghost. They're embarrassed by the display, the, la the extravagant display of the Holy Ghost. I'm not. 
I love the river. Costa Talamombo say it. I mean, I just I love the pray. I love also Taranea. Oh, you can't do that in church. Watch me. Oh, the Bible says you can't. No, it doesn't. That's all I got to say. No, it doesn't. Hallelujah. Says just the opposite. That's how the church was born. Give me a break. Somebody standing there looking at me, trying to tell me that the Bible says you can't pray in the Holy Ghost in church. It's really not even, it's really not even worth my time to discuss. I mean, seeing as how the church was born in the, in the fire of the Holy Ghost, that's where all the fun is. That's where all the action is. Hallelujah. That's where all the excitement is. That's what the world is in. That's what the world is, is captivated by. That's where 3,000 get saved. I mean, you know, you know, in one meeting, crammed in one aisle, one, 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 one small roadway, I should say. Forgive me for spitting. My name is Spitzbergen. Spitzbergen. Can you me? Open your Bibles with me to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Can everybody hear me okay? I got this, you know, I, I don't even know what to do with this microphone. This thing. It is, wasn't made for people like me. This was made for somebody who, who basically stands like this and reads. And every once in a while, takes a pointer and points. I gotta, I gotta move around, man. I, who knows? I'm, I'm believing God gets so hit with the power of God that I jump up to the ceiling, knock a couple of tiles out. I mean, you know, whatever. I, mean, I just would, I, I'm expecting, I'm expecting the unexpected. I'm expect, I'm expecting. Hey, wouldn't it be awesome? Ooh. Wouldn't boo rabba sataya. Wouldn't it be awesome if the Holy Ghost and His mercy and graces came in and caused us all to experience at the same time a heavenly vision? Where we all saw Jesus? Man, I'm, just, I'm expecting the Bible things here tonight. I'm going to declare the Word of God. And if you sit there all guilt struck and poor you, I poor you. If you sit there all trapped in a prison of condemnation, I'm glad I'm not you. You know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> Come on, man. This is about grabbing a hold of something from heaven. This is about the Word of God being delivered to you and I as a free gift. It's about God liberating us with correction and instruction and saying, freely receive, freely give. Saying, look, I'll give you everything I got, yours. And of His fullness, have all we received. And grace for grace. Just try to get past and of His fullness, have all we received. What does that mean? Theologians are still scratching their head. Many of them look like Walter over here. They scratch their head so much. They still scratch in their head. <laughs> to know the love of Christ. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. People scratching their heads. What does that mean? It means exactly what it says. It isn't about anything that you and I have done out of our own capacity or what we think about ourselves. It's about what we think about Jesus and what he's done and what he's given to us. And the fact that we love that and we want to participate with that and we'll do anything to conform to his will. Hallelujah. 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 Are you 2 Peter 1, 3? As his divine, according as his divine power has given unto us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Now I'm going to just tell you right now, there is no excuse. We've been given all divine power. When I think about divine power, I think about the reality of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. The scripture says that we've been given God power. We've been given dunatotio, dunatotio, which means to have God's power. I know in or, the power of God, which, you know, of course, King James translated uh, weapons for warfare, not carnal, but mighty through God. And, uh, uh, and, you know, that really isn't a very good translation. It's God's power. This divine power has equipped us with a divine ability, the divine power at the activity of what Christ Jesus did when he said, is it easier for, you to, for me to say, is it easier to say your sins be forgiven or take up your bed and walk? And so that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth. 
to forgive sin. And then power to give to, give to us the Holy Ghost. He gave us power to, in, within the framework of oneness with Him. Father, the glory you gave to me, I've given it to them. So according to His divine power and by His by, divine power and through His divine power, he, translate, he transferred to us everything that we have need of to walk in life, godliness and life. His life is godliness. Godliness are the deeds and characters and manner of the living God Himself. According as His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. The one, who, the one who has called us to glory and virtue. Which means virtue, the, word, the, the Greek word there for virtue. Arete. Arete. The Greek word is arete. And it means, it means excellence of character. He's called, us to, he's called us to glory and excellence of character. I mean, and what kind of doxa? What kind of glory? What kind of doxa? The same glory that Jesus said, the same glory that the Father gave me. In John chapter 17, verse 21, he gave this to us. Look, just look at the Bible right there. Look at it. If you're looking at the Bible, can you see that? Did you see any urn anywhere? See any deserve anywhere? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's according as his, 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 it's, it's his will. It's his choice. It's his divine power. This is divine power of God, the divine power. We talk about divine healing. We talk about divine grace and divine work. And this is the divine power of God that has supplied something to you and me so that we can do everything that he's purposed for us to do. So that we, first of all, he starts us, jump starts us with a whole new heart. Doesn't jump start the old heart. He jump starts us with a whole new heart. Hallelujah. A whole new spirit. A whole new passion. A whole new emotion. A whole new inspiration. A whole new outlook. A whole new vision. A whole new desire of everything. I mean, we don't, we're not earthbound anymore. We, we seated with him in heaven. Don't get too excited. <laughs> See, people just sit there and look at me like that because they haven't had, the faith hasn't been activated. The faith for being seated in heaven hadn't been activated yet. I know you think about it, and I know you know about it. I know about the mental ascent. But the faith, when it's activated, it has an outworking. It has an outworking of divine favor in every dimension of life. Every dimension, spiritually, physically, that's divine healing. That's divine health. Hallelujah. There's a place of divine health. I discovered a place of divine health. People say, how do you do that? How can you get around people breathing on you with all kinds of colds and all this other stuff and it doesn't affect you? Because I stay in the divine flow. It's a divine flow that works out the divine health. I stay in the anointing. My wife was, my wife, she, she took on, a, she had a, this thing that hits her every once in a while. It was like this double pneumonia thing. And, and I said, and I told her, I said, baby, you know, I love you with all my heart. You know, you mean a lot to me, but you know what? You need to flow on the anointing more. And she's in the Word all the time. She's in the Word all the time. She's in prayer all the time. She is just such a blessing to me. But the bottom line of it is, when you flow on the anointing, first of all, I used to, look, let me just tell you. If you think that you need to be preaching to flow in the anointing, you're wrong. There is a way to flow in the anointing without preaching. In fact, when you learn how to flow in the anointing without preaching, your preaching is far more effective. You listen to me, okay? Flowing in the anointing, because the more you flow in the anointing, there's that supply. There's the river. That's the river of life. That's the presence of the living God flowing through every dimension of our life. That is healing ointment. I'm telling you, that's keeping power. I mean, that's provision in every area of life. It touches us in every area of life. Anyway, anyway, my dear, my dear wife, she took a hold of the thing. She busted through it. She didn't go for medication. She didn't go for this and that. I told her, I said, listen, baby, if you need to get medication, go get medication. Fine, whatever. I, bottom line is, I can't lose you. I mean, I... Yeah, you, you got to stay around. But I wasn't concerned about that. No, I prayed for her. I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And I just felt, you know, she got to activate her faith in it. She's stepping up into a greater realm of pulling people out of wheelchairs. Well, guess what? You start on yourself. Just start on yourself. Just uh, start on yourself. Huh? And so, you know, I, <laughs> she was telling me, I can't breathe. I can't. She woke me up in the middle of the night. I can't breathe. I said, well, breathe in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to go back to sleep. Are you okay? I'm tired. <laughs> huh? And she said, oh, I can't breathe. I said, I said in Jesus' name, breathe. And then I laid my hands on her and, oh, and then shook her around a little bit. I said, how are you doing now? She said, I'm doing better. I don't know whether she just wanted me to leave her alone. but She said, I'm doing better. She ain't, but I, just, I said, baby, you got to take this thing. You got to take this thing. 
take it. Run with it. You know the realms of the anointing. If you didn't know, because you can, you can, I got pictures of her flowing in the anointing. There is an expression on people's face that is not normal when the anointing is there. I have, I have film of her. I have, I have YouTubes of her flowing in the anointing. I just say, you know how to flow in the anointing. Go there, and it, you're going to get a breakthrough, and, and that's, that's, where it's, that's where it's all at. That flow, that supply of the Spirit, this divine life and power of God. Hallelujah. People, heavenly realm, a heavenly realm of divine power and a divine grace is made available to us when we understand, when we're willing to let the Holy Spirit, who alone can do this, minister to us faith. And, and you know, I don't know. <laughs> I would say that faith comes before the revelation. The spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of him is a wonderful thing. And, you know, <laughs> it was very fitting that Paul spoke that just before he said in Ephesians 2, 6. It's a good thing he said it was Ephesians 1, 18, 19. Before he said Ephesians 2, 6, when he said, we're seated together with him in a heavenly realm. Because the reality of it is, that is an awesome, that is an awesome reality. It's an awesome truth. It's an awesome point of our relationship. And, and people want to pull us out of that. People want to pull I, I have to deal with it all the time. I used to didn't even understand what it was. Well, Lord, what am I having to deal with here? What is all of this distraction? What is all, all of this persecution? What is all of this stuff that goes on around me that, it, that, that grabs a hold of my emotions? And I really didn't understand it at first. And the Lord just began to deal with me. It's really all about trying to keep you out of, a, of, out of an entirely different disposition and dimension. Huh? And so I want to talk to you about living in that disposition that has with it a dimension. And then that's what Paul, that's what Peter ministers here in chapter one of, of, of this, his second epistle. When he talks about the divine power. Having given us that, we got it, we got it. He said, I need, I, I'm too weak. No, you're not. Yeah, the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. How do I get it? It's yours. Somebody said, well, well, how do I activate it? Be filled with the Spirit. How do you get filled with the Spirit? Easy, ask the rock for some water. I mean, how, you know, I mean, how simple can this be? Jesus, please give me to drink. Hmm? Lord, come fill me. Lord, come. You know, I, 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 I pray this prayer, and, and I give this prayer to everybody else to pray too. Lord, strengthen me in my body to stand against sickness and disease. Lord, strengthen me in my soul to desire, to love only you, desire only holy emotions, seek only those pleasures that are right, your right hand. Strengthen me in my spirit to stand against sin and iniquity. Lord, lead me not into temptation. You know, it was a wonderful revelation to me when I just found out that if I asked God to not lead me into temptation, he wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, what a breakthrough. I mean, I'm going on through all these different problems and trials. I don't even watch going on. Father said, you have not because you ask not. <laughs> hey, now, uh, look, look at the prayer. Lead me not into temptation. But deliver me from evil. My, what a prayer. I started praying that prayer. My life changed. It was a prayer of faith. It became a prayer of faith to me. I wanted to become a prayer of faith to you because it changes the whole dynamic. Satan doesn't have the upper hand no more. Circumstances no longer dictate to you. You're not tossed to and fro by every situation that begins to crop up in your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody told me not too long ago, say, you had no value money. I said, you're right. I have no value money. It means absolutely nothing to me. <laughs> what does mean something to me is faith. What does mean something to me is the favor of the Father. What does mean something to me is pleasing Him. That's all that means anything to me. Money don't mean nothing to me. Uh, but I'm going to tell you right now, it has a stronghold on a lot of people's lives. Finances swing people emotionally. Your state of affairs swing you all over the place. Don't you know how to, can, can you learn how to be content sleeping in the back of a car? Can you learn how to can, be content sleeping in a tent? Huh? Can you learn how to be content with just a little? You don't need any more. Huh? I, I, wasn't in, I wasn't in a situation where I was, uh, you know, driving around in a, a car that my dad bought for me for 200 bucks. In a house that we didn't really even like. You know, the stinky house. It didn't really even matter to me. It's like, this is what the Lord's provided. Thank you, Father. I'm good. 
I'm good, praise God. And in, in that dimension, I find, I, I'm not distracted with wanting something more. I'm just so happy. I, I'm so happy. I got Jesus. I got Holy Spirit. I'm seated in a heavenly realm. I got Father in my life. I got my name written in the Lamb's book of life. I'm filled with all riches of heaven. I don't need none of this other stuff. What happens in that dimension, you now are liberated to seek first the kingdom of God. All you desire is him. Father, use me. Do whatever you want to do with my life. Doesn't matter what it is. I mean, I, I, when I, 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 was, I had a pretty good job. I, probably, I made about $28,000 a year doing survey engineering. Went to school to graduate from school to make a job to get a job to make to making sixteen thousand dollars a year and I'm like I'm very bright <laughs> but you know what I, I just said forget about it doesn't even matter father I find myself here in the center of your will and plan it doesn't even matter it's not about all of these other things it's about I want to be taught by the Holy Spirit I want to be trained by you. I've resigned my life over to you, Lord. Now take charge of it and show me how to live out this life. He's not going to show you how to live out this life if you don't have a prayer life. He's not going to show you how to live out this life if you don't have a fellowship life, a relationship life, which is centered around prayer and praise and the Word. I mean, I'm telling you, I, 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 told, I told the guys when we planted the church in Bly, I said, listen, there's three things you've got to do here. You've got to worship. You got to do. You got to do the word of God. I mean, systematic. Not do not, not systematically His word, not your word. The Lord said in Isaiah fifty-eight, "When you see speaking your own word, when you quit doing your own pleasure, then I cause you to ride upon your high places, and I feed you with the heritage of Jacob." Okay, so he, number one, he, this is about worship. Number one is about worship, and I don't sing those songs, no sing-along songs. This is about worship. Number two, it's about the Word of God, God's Word going forward. And number three, it's about the ministry of the Holy Spirit in every dimension for salvation, for healing, for deliverance. That's what this is about. That's what your life is supposed to be about. That's how Jesus' life can be summarized in those three dimensions. That's what Father has entrusted to us. Learn how to do that. Husband with your wife. Wife with your husband. Parents with your children. Children with your parents. Children, you know, so siblings one with another I mean come on just learn how to do this learn how to I mean if you want to if you want to see if you want to see growth in your life in terms of the healing ministry let pray for everybody that's sick if they even look sick if it looks sick pray for it <laughs> say listen let me pray for you God's gonna heal you right now don't pray like a scribe and a Pharisee don't pray like a religious person oh God if it be your will oh God knock 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 Father, you there? Hello. Hey, testing one, two, three. <laughs> yeah, it's in Jesus' name, I command you to be healed right now. Now we're talking some authority. As many as received sonship, he gave authority. Praise God. Hallelujah. As many received him, he gave them the authority to be sons. And so I'm talking about sonship. I, I take, you know what I did. I took John chapter 1, verse 16, and I married it with Galatians chapter 4, verse 7. Huh? He gave to us this sonship ministry, the airship ministry. We're not like children anymore. Dad, can we? We are, we are sons doing his work, ministering in, in his stead. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful how God gave Joshua the ability to go and do what he needed to get done? He said, listen, I'm going to give you the resources to do to get done whatever you need to do. One day, Joshua said, hey, I need to tell the sun and the moon to stand still. He didn't have to go into prayer meeting. didn't have to call everybody up and get all their intercessors praying and fasting. Did you notice that? <laughs> he had authority. He was given an authority to get a job done. He was given an authority to lead Israel into their inheritance. You and I have been given an authority to get a job done, to go everywhere and make Jesus known, the power of Jesus Christ to make him known. Now, what's going to make the difference? Participation. There's an activation of the anointing in your life that has got to take place. It's got to be valued once it begins to be valued. Dear people, things, the dynamic of it begins to change. Supernatural stuff starts happening that I can't even begin to explain to you. Look, I, I set myself aside to pray. And I gave, I gave myself a particular hour, and I prayed this. I pray at this hour. 
okay? And there was a bunch of things happening one day. And, you know, I had all the reason not to go pray at that hour. And so, uh, but I went to pray at the hour. And when I got there, I, when I got there to that place of prayer, what happened was a glorious event. I, I became that much more aware of how valuable and meaningful it was to the Father for me to come and pray. To not prioritize him to make him first. Because at that moment, I set at a dynamic. I had all the justifiable reasons to go take care of all these things for the kingdom, for the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Or I'm going to go and keep my appointment of talking with the Lord in, inter in fellowship with him. It's a moment. Of, it's, a, it's a fellowship. It's a time together with him of touching heaven. It's not some, you know, giving him my, my Christmas list what I want for Christmas and all of my wishes and all of my commands. My time of fellowship and just thanking him. Father, you're so wonderful. Thank you for the day. Thank you for this life. Just, my, just the basic stuff. And the, and, the, and the glory of heaven that I experienced that day, at that moment, caused me to realize that Father values my prayer coming and praying far more than I did. It changed my life. I want you to have the same experience. I want you to understand how valuable it is to the Father. When you prioritize, when you make him number one, when you make a commitment to him and you say, Lord, I'm going to do this no matter what. I'm going to do this. I'm with you. I, I committed this to this. I praise God for every one of you who are willing to commit to reading this, to the Bible in 90 days and you've stuck with it. Praise God. Those of you that are behind, catch up. Okay? And let me tell you how to catch up. I'm not going to make it hard for you. Okay? You ready? <clears throat> Take the remainder number of days that we have left. And then take the remainder of the pages that you have left to read and divide them. Okay? Are you with me? Yeah. Did, did I say go sit down and, and, and read for 12 hours? No, I didn't. Because that wouldn't be quality reading time anyways. I just want you, you're going to have to learn how to get yourself out of the ditch. You're going to have to learn how to go ahead and catch up. You're going to have to learn how to quit abdicating. You're going to have to learn how to quit getting overwhelmed and stopping and you're starting something good but not following through because things get tough and difficult and hard and it's vacation time. Vacation time. That should mean that you've got more time to spend with the Lord, not less. I don't get the, it doesn't, things don't match up here for me. Help me understand. The reality of it is that people aren't living their lives in heaven. They're living their lives on earth. Talking about heaven someday. I want to, I, by the help and the grace of God, Father's going to give us the ability to help you make a shift. Mandara say, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, listen to me. I am giving my everything to the Lord because I want to make that shift so you can see me standing over here vaporizing in the presence of the Lord. Okay? Hallelujah. <laughs> you, I, I said that. I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, Father, there's a purpose that we should be raising the dead. There's a purpose that, that we should have uh, that many more signs, wonders, and miracles and demonstration of the power of God. Come on. That Jesus Christ would be manifested in a mortal bush. <laughs> I am telling you, I, I, I'm going to do everything. I want, first of all, I, I, I want that more than anything else. I want increase of the anointing. I want an increase of the manifest presence of the living God in my life. Second of all, I want to model it so more people will go ahead and come on and do this. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, mange retela. Hallelujah. And then, and then, and then, and then, and about a day, and then the Ashaya, and then the thing at a bus arena. And the thing about it is, you look at this, and the Lord's giving us everything that we need, all the resources we need to get the job done. He's giving us all. He, he, he said, He said, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna do you, I'm gonna endo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm going to endo you with power from on. I'm gonna do you with power. <laughs> you shall receive. The promise of the Father. I mean, you know, the Lord's looking at us and he's saying, look, I mean, this is Papa's promise to us. So when did he need to promise us? So when did we ever deserve a promise from him? When did we ever do anything for him? Never. 
This is the abundance of his love out of his own good pleasure because he just likes the stuff of doing us blessings and doing this honor and doing this grace and bringing us into a place of just communion and, 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 and fellowship with them. We can't even begin to comprehend it. The best way you can comprehend it is to imagine yourself falling deeply in love with someone and you want to be around them all the time and multiply that by God. That's the way he feels about you. I praise God I got one hallelujah and a couple of shouts and a shake. Because that's about the best news that anybody's ever heard on the planet ever. Especially when the reality of it is it's true. Because the measure of God's love. When Moses wanted to understand who God was in his fullness, he said, this is who I am. I'm full of mercy. I'm full of love and kindness. I'm full of grace and I'm full of truth. That's who I am. Hallelujah. I'm full of long-suffering, enduring patience. I'll do whatever it takes to get you out of the problems and the mess and the situation and the circumstances that you are in all the way over here into my majesty and my glory and my splendor. Hallelujah. See, I believe that and thus I have the fruits of it in my life. Huh? And I want more of the fruits. I want it increased. I want it. And everybody on the planet can, everybody can rise up and say it's not true and try to say it ain't, it ain't going to happen that way. I'm not listening to nobody. I got the word right here. I got the Bible. I got his promise declaring to me exactly what he's purposed. Just because you can't understand it ain't changing nothing about it. Huh? Just because you want to try to express the word of God based upon your experience. I have none of it. You live with it. All I can say is I'm glad I'm not you. <laughs> and I want you to be glad that you're not you from this time forward. Amen. I want you to be happy that you from now on you belong to Jesus. <laughs> I'm in him. I'm living his life. I'm done with mine. I'm glad I'm not me. Because that was the other part of it. For those of you who looked a little shocked. Not only am I glad I'm not you, I'm glad I'm not me. I'm glad I found in Jesus. I'm in him, but he's in me. Hallelujah. I, this life that I now live, I'm dead with him. I'm cruised. I'm dead. My life is hid with God. Thus, all that he has is that which I possess. That's all that I confess. That's all that I desire. And anything that looks like it's short of that, I'm reaching for it higher. I'm on my tippy toes crying out, boost me up, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Are you listening? Yes. Boost me up. Yes. Hallelujah. Kitakara <laughs> naka. Sutayarama manjaya. Hayaponamaya saya. Hallelujah. And I am, I am so blessed because my kids have been around watching this, and they got it, man. They got it. They've been watching mom and dad today, little, this, little, little guys, and now they got it. They're running with it. And some of you, are, you've got it. You're running with it. And I just pray in Jesus' name that every one of you will increase. Increase with the increase of God. I pray that you will increase more and more. That your faith will increase more and more. This is the faith of God. Whoa. This is the increase of the faith of Jesus Christ, which is an increase that comes with an increase in the manifest presence of the Lord. And let me tell you what the anointing means biblically. From an Old Testament point of view, the anointing is the means by which you are now empowered by God. You are, you are massaged, rubbed deeply with this oil of anointing to live completely other or to live in complete holiness. The anointing is the power to live in holiness. To be holy, to be consecrated, to be separated. Holiness is defined by God's complete transcendent otherness. Holiness, by definition, is that which God possesses within the, his framework of being absolutely other than everything else that exists. <laughs> and he brought us in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. With a gift of holiness, man. Hallelujah. I'm, a, I'm taking, I'm taking, I'm laying hold on this. I'm laying hold. Oh my God. I'm, it's mine. It's mine. 
Oh, yes, it's mine. It's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. I mean, come on. It's time to grab a hold of these things. I mean, listen, I, I tell you right now, I think a big part of prophecy is learning how to prophesy to yourself. A big part of prophecy is learning how to declare the word of God to yourself and praise him for all the good things that he has done. I know what, I know the means that will redeem the time. I know God has given us the very plan and provision and insight to what, how to redeem the time for the day is evil. Be filled with the Spirit. Be continuing to the Baharadai with the psalms and the hymns and the spiritual songs, sing and make a melody in your heart, giving thanks always to God by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What a life. Woo! There's a lot of things that opposes that. There's a lot of opposition. I know, I know. But I don't care. I don't care. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't count. It don't count. Forget about it. Smash it. Smash it. I called up I, I, when baby was in the hospital and, and they said the baby had some strep A. Just crazy, one thing after another. You know, I had called up Tim, Tim Hall. And I, he was in South Africa at the time. I said, Tim, they're saying that baby's got strep A now. He started screaming over, like, he started screaming over the phone. I smash it! I smash it! So I joined in. I smash it too! It was so effective. I mean, the, the baby was immediately healed and cured. The baby was immediately he healed and cured. Praise God. Praise God for people who just say, I'm smashing it. That's the way you need to deal with your problems from here on out. That's the way you need to deal, that's the you need to deal with opposing things. When something says you can't, you smash it. <laughs> I mean, just go ahead. Take, in to, take, take up the ministry of Jesus right now. He's coming to rule with a rod of iron. He's going to smash it. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. As a potter smashes a vessel of clay, he's going to smash it. You start smashing. Everything that opposes the word of God and the will of God and the purposes of God. Everything that would try to hold. I look at all those things that belong to doubt and unbelief and unthankfulness and murmuring and complaining as demonic forces of hell set against me and set against God to stop everything the Father has freely given me in His love and I'm not going to sit by and tolerate that mess. What am I going to do? Come on, man. <laughs> Listen, the Lord didn't say be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might for nothing. That's a whole lot of power. That's a whole lot of divine power. That's a whole lot of ability. Faith is the very centerpiece of everything that God will do in our life. And every force of hell and everything that you have to deal with is opposing that faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And his faith comes by his word. And when you lock down with the word of God and you say, this is all that I live by from here this day forward, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. I want the life, the heavenly life, not an earthly one. Heavenly success, not an earthly one. Yeah. Heavenly fame. And I guarantee you, I am passionate about fame in heaven. If there's any place you want to have fame, if there's anywhere you want to be known, come on. Yeah. Jesus, I know, hell says. And Paul, I know. And Mark, I know you too. <laughs> I'm not on the side of it. Who are you? <laughs> Amen. Why? Because we, we, we have set our hearts to living in Christ Jesus, declaring his word the way he said it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not coming with sword or shield, not with the arm of flesh. God says, cursed is every man who trusts in the arm of flesh. And my be mine became more vile than any others in my own eyes. Blessed is the man who puts his trust in the Lord and makes the Lord the sole object of his trust. And trust is the foundation of faith. And God says, open up the gates to the righteous nation that keeps trust with me. There's an access that we have by the Spirit of truth. The Holy Ghost has come to lead us and guide us. He's come to take care of the areas of our disposition that is wrong. 
There's areas of our disposition that is wrong, and it's affecting how we are able to function in the divine power of God. I'm going to tell you right now, unforgiveness will keep you from moving in faith. The things that we decide to do will keep us from uh, uh, hooking up with the spirit of truth who would take us into every glorious dimension of the heavenly life right now. During the Old Testament, under the law, God said, obey my charge, keep my word, and this is what's going to be. You'll have days of heaven upon this earth. How much more is it now? How much more today? I'll have it no other way. I'm living in heaven, and my circumstances, be they great or be they foul, cannot change my mind. And I guarantee you, Father has the right to t- check us out and test us out. Huh? Where we have opposing circumstances, and, uh, and we're going to let circumstances override our relationship with God and exalt itself above His promises. I'm going to tell you right now, Father's just going to sort us out and say, Look, you've got a problem here, and I want to fix it. I want your faith to be found in honor and glory and praise when I come, so I'm going to let you go through some more heaviness. You're going to go through some more hard times. Say, Praise God for the hard times. Praise God so that I can learn how to praise him, so that I can, I can, I can understand things, something more valuable than anything else that I would measure in this life. And that is faith. Faith is more valued than the, than the finest of gold. Faith is more valuable than anything else that exists. Hallelujah. Faith is, faith is not only the centerpiece, it is the means by which all the rest of the gifts of the Spirit function. Because... If, <laughs> If you're not moving in a dimension of faith and confidence, of course, I, I, look at, I look at confidence, boldness, and assurance as all fruits of the Spirit. I've got 26 fruits of the Spirit that I've counted in the Word of God. But I look at, I look at confidence and boldness and assurance hooking up with that dimension of faith, that faith that says, I know, that faith that says it's mine, that faith that gives me a great confidence to move forward in prophecy, that gives me a great confidence to move forward in revelation, that gives me a great confidence and, and it just like surges in my spirit where that gift of faith begins to surge in your spirit. And you look at somebody who's in a disastrous situation or who's in deep sickness or pain or disease and you say, in the name of Jesus, be healed, be cured, go free. What a wonderful thing, huh? I want that more. I want that more. I love the, disp- I love, the love that accompanies miracles. <clears throat> I, 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 my only problem is... <laughs> that I'm working with right now and trying to understand more clearly in the Lord is why I don't flow in this in a, in a continuous way. Because when <clears throat> those times when we step into that miracle anointing <clears throat> and there's that level of love, it's just this amazing love. It's an amazing compassion for everybody. It, it's, it, it's undescribable. You're going to have to experience it to understand but the miracles just happened in that realm. I love the disposition of, 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 of peace and of joy and all these wonderful things of heaven that accompany all the gifts of the Spirit, all the workings and the manifestation of the power of God. I just, I want those things more. I want you to experience them. I want you to lay hold on them. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Ru- Ruth Anna says to me, she says, Dad, I never felt the anointing like that. Because first, first of all, She's stepping up into a greater anointing. And, and I'm so blessed. I mean, there's a revival anointing upon her. And, you know, it, it, you know, it, didn't, it didn't come without a lot of persecution and opposition. People don't understand you. But, you know, she said, Dad, you know, when I, when I ministered and the Word of God was flowing out, she said, after it was all done, I've never felt like that before. I said, yeah, well, that, that is the wonderful divine expression that will only come because you're willing to let the Holy Spirit speak through you when you preach. I want everybody to experience that. Father's not leaving anyone out. Praise God. Father decides who's going to be the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But let me just tell you right now, he's brought everybody into this. He's equipped everybody. He wants everybody to be equipped. He said, whosoever believes, anyone, anybody, he's let anybody in on this. If anyone believes, whoever believes, these works shall you do. And greater works. Wow. This relationship, these signs shall follow them that believe. Wow. He sent us all out to go and proclaim the gospel, to give us that anointing to speak on his behalf. Wow. Now, there there are things that you and I want to give all attendance to. It's the works and the ways of godliness. 
It's the glory. It's His presence. His glory is defined by His presence. His the glory is defined by all that His presence brings. He turned the water into wine and, therefore, and showed forth His glory. His glory is there seen in the Mount of Transfiguration. All of these, this glory and this excellence of character, all these things the Holy Spirit has come to teach us and lead us and guide us in, they're the ways of righteousness, is being willing to learn righteousness. You know, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus said, come learn to me. What is he talking about? Learning righteousness. People, people don't understand. The church is supposed to be a place where you learn righteousness. Not being told all are unrighteous, we're all unrighteous, they're unrighteous. No, not one. Nonsense. We the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Made the righteous, born the righteousness of God. He bore our sins in his own body on a tree that we being dead to sin might live unto righteousness. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And I go on and on. All this nonsense, heresy, false doctrine stuff of we all unrighteous, that is twisting one, two verses of Scripture completely out of context and abandoning more than 560 verses of Scripture that describes God teaching us the ways of righteousness, leading us by the Holy Ghost to live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. Come on now and be led by the Holy Ghost. Yes. When Jesus says, come and learn to me, I'm meek and lowly. He's talking about learning of the ways of righteousness. Yes. Hallelujah. I mean, we need to get excited about righteousness as Zechariah did when he discovered that his son was going to be preparing the way for Jesus. He said, now having been delivered out of the hand of our enemies, we might serve him in righteousness and holiness all the days of our life. I mean, praise God for somebody who's excited about it. Rather than living in the ditch of, the, of, 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 of demonic carnality. Come on now. Amen. God wants to teach us righteousness. He wants us to teach us the way of heaven. When you're seated in a realm of heaven, living in the heavenly realm, having received the life of God, filled with the life of God, filled with the very life that God himself has, filled with the spirit of holiness, having the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Whew. I'm being taught all the ways of life and discover that his ways are far better than the ways of the demonic and the ways of this world. It is, I mean, this is a good kind of life and a good kind of living. Come on, people, you're going to jump in. You're going to jump all in. And then you realize that he's given us everything that we need to be able to fully live out this life of, of, of his life and his godliness. Mm -mm -mm. And then when we, rec when we recognize that those things that Paul said concerning Galatians, if you walk in the Spirit, he says, you know, you're not fulfilled the lust of the flesh. And then he goes on and says, and the fruits of the Spirit are love and joy and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, uh, Faith, meekness, temperance. Of course, I left out goodness. Huh? My goodness, why, did you just live, why if you just lived all day long in goodness? That's actually another way to translate this word that we, this Greek word that I have a hard time with. Aria, aria. It's, <clears throat> it, which, which means excellence of character. You could actually translate it goodness. But it's actually a different word that's used over there in, uh, in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 23. Is everybody here with me? Yeah. Is it a terrible thing to be taught how to walk in love? <laughs> that's not a terrible thing. It's a good thing. And I just take care about er that, <clears throat> that itself would take care about every evil thing that there is. <laughs> it, that itself would take care of about every evil thing that there is. Because when you walk in love, love works no ill. And so you fulfill all, the, all, all of the law. Huh? Just by, just by walking in this divine love. And so what happens now is Peter's going to go into this. He's going to emphasize this. Here in 2 Peter. Let's try to get through this real quickly. Now that I'm finished with the announcements. <clears throat> so he says, According as his divine power is given unto us all things that pertain unto life. Oh, my goodness. There, <laughs> And they play day in the life and godliness. Listen, there's no reason. There's no excuse. All excuses have been taken away. There is absolutely no reason that you have. No right that you have. No, no, no justification for not living in this life and godliness when he's given us all the ability to do it. And so he says to us then, according to him that has called us unto glory and to excellence of character, virtue, or goodness, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be made partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. What a deliberation. What a liberal. I'm not going back. 
I'm, I'm living in heaven. I like heaven a lot better than hell. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. I like walking in the Holy Ghost and not fellowshipping with any unholy ghost. I like walking with the Spirit, the heavenly Spirit, the divine Spirit, not a, a demon spirit, not an unclean spirit. So the Lord says then, he says in verse 5, so besides this, besides this, <laughs> give all diligence. Then listen, people, all diligence. I, how can I help you with that word? How can we help you describe this undescribable, unexplainable word that seems to be so abstract and aloof from the thoughts of men that no one can really comprehend what they're supposed to do next? <laughs> diligence. How, what are you diligent about? How many of you pay your bills on time? You're diligent about that. How many of you? Because huh, that's going to take a lot of stuff, a lot of work, a lot of effort. Huh? How many of you ever achieved anything in, ath in athletics? Huh? Achieved things in athletics. Yeah, well, that's diligence. How many of you achieved goals, academic goals? Well, that's excellence. Huh? That's, that's diligence, rather. That's diligence. So the Lord says, okay, I want you to give all diligence to learning righteousness. I want you to give all diligence to walking the way of righteousness. He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, he said, The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That means that the righteous will inherit the kingdom of God. Huh? Did that had to, is that too much of a linguistic stretch for anybody? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I tell you right now, if you want to get persecuted for righteousness' sake, and uh, by the way, blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness' sake because the kingdom of God belongs to them, just start teaching a message like this in Southern California. Just start teaching that God the Holy Ghost has come to lead us and guide us into all righteousness. That we're actually supposed to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And that with our heart we believe under righteousness because we've been cut off from sin by the death and burial of the Lord Jesus Christ. That we might live under righteousness so that He was made sin for us who knew no sin. That we might be born the righteousness of God in Him. Amen. And because of the miracle new birth, we've been created anew in righteousness and true holiness. After his image. I wonder, is the Holy Ghost doing anything that's not righteous? What is righteousness? Righteousness is the actions of God. How was Abraham accounted for righteousness? He was, it was accounted to him for righteousness because he believed God. He moved in faith with God. He said, okay, Father, just like a little child, this is what you're going to give me. This is the covenant you want me to enter into. I'm all in with it. And look at the commitment that went along with it. Look at the participation that went along with it. Hello. I mean, it's total separation. It was total sanctification. It was total abandonment. He left the country of his, of his nativity, the country of, where, of his whole family. And he went out into a place not knowing where he was going. Walking, walking in this realm of just trusting God and obeying God. And it was counted to him for righteousness. Because he believed God. Hallelujah. Huh? Father said, I'm going to do all this for you. And he did, couldn't even imagine how it was even possible. Hallelujah. Father, well, thank you for touching this body right here in Jesus' name. Healed. Sukkata Saya. Father, I thank you for causing Leslie Faulkner to walk in divine health. How do you like that? Father just says, I'll give you a gift. I mean, you've been healed of just about everything a person can be healed of. And so how about now just not needing healing anymore in that sense? You just walk in divine health. How about that? It's becoming a lost doctrine to the church. Huh? It's almost becoming a false doctrine to the church. Lost doctrines become false doctrines, even though they're very clearly substantiated in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Well, you have to start living different, thinking different, acting different. And the only way you're ever going to do that is you're going to have to give yourself over to living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, and be led by the Spirit. And the only way you're ever going to do that is you're going to have to start living by the Word. <laughs> the Word of God is going to have to become your daily bread. The Word of God is going to have, have to be something far more important to you than all those other things that you've been actively involved in so the lord says give all diligence and i want to just jump down not only does he say use the word diligence there but just look down in verse 10 he says he said give diligence to make your call and election sure one of the things that the lord has been very specific about is this he said he's predestinated to be conformed to the image of the son we're supposed to be look and look like act like jesus in every way we're supposed to follow him imitate god as as dear children 
as beloved children. Huh? This is our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Father hasn't left it up to us to do it out of our own ability. Because Christ Jesus came in the flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. And he did an excellent job. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Now we're living. Now we get to live in a whole different realm. We, because he condemns sin in the flesh. We get to live in a whole different realm. In a whole different realm. Now we get to live this life in the spirit. Somebody said, oh, pastor said, oh, your definition of living in the spirit is different from other people's definition for living in the spirit. I said, well, that's fine, but I just know this. If you live in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, your definition is different uh, than other people's. Well, that's fine. I may be so, but I know that if you live in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The spiritual laws of life that are in Christ Jesus have made me free from being under the yoke of bondage of the law of sin and death. I'm not under the laws of the spiritual laws of sin and death. I'm not having to be the slave to or servant to sin. Now, God's righteousness is going to be activated in my life. My members, my life, my activity, my demeanor, my disposition can literally be weapons of right, righteousness. Oh, there's that word again. There's that word again. It just keeps cropping up everywhere. He leads in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Oh, well, that's Old Testament. Oh, okay. That really makes sense, doesn't it? Why don't you think about what you just said? Lord Jesus. We just pray. It's so wonderful that we've now been given a new heart and a new, we've been given a new heart and a new spirit. He's written his laws upon our heart and upon our mind so that we can do his word, so that we can keep his commandments, so that we can keep his statutes. Guess what that is? Take a wild guess of what that is. Righteousness. <laughs> Whoa, bro. What a, what a stroke of brilliance. That is righteousness. It's the right acts. It's the acts of the Lord. It's what he does. All his ways, uh, all his acts are righteousness. All his ways are holiness. Uh, his righteousness is expressed by his love. His righteousness is expressed by his mercy. His righteousness is expressed by his forgiveness. His righteousness is expressed by his humility. His righteousness is expressed by his loneliness. His brokenness, which are unique attributes of God that seem to be almost impossible for people to understand. How can he be broken and contrite and lowly? Because we, 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 try, to exp we try to connect those to, you know, bad experiences. And they're not. It's a whole different disposition of life. It's a whole different nature. It's an excellent nature. It's an excellent character. It's the divine nature. Hallelujah. Walking around, having the model of what life is all about is defined for us in the realms of humility and lowliness and meekness. It's all upside down, you see, here in this world because the prince and the power of the air, the God of this world, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience that teaches all men all these lies and all this ungodly stuff. He's a spirit of pride. It's just everything is opposite. Men reflect that. I'm glad I'm not having nothing to do with him. I'm glad I'm clean escape his kingdom. I am a terror to the kingdom of darkness. I, I, have, a, I have been assigned by the living God in the ministry of Jesus Christ to go everywhere and destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cast out devils. Hallelujah. Smash them. Amen. They want to sit around and talk about their lust of the flesh and their temptation and their problems. Nonsense. You foul spirit of hell. Now take those words into your mouth. Smash it. Don't listen to it either. Somebody calls you up and starts telling you about all their problems. Just tell them to repent in Jesus' name. Say, I cast that thing out right now. Oh, no, I want you to listen to me, all the things and trip trials and tribulations I'm going through. No, I want to listen to all the trials and tribulations you're going through. I want you to step up in the glory right land right now. I want you to step up into heaven. You know, people, people want to try to get the Lord come down in their problem. He says, no, I deliver you out of your problem so you come up here. Amen. Spirit of the Lord calls us up. He calls us up. Hallelujah. Praise God. He opened up the prison doors. Hallelujah. Sudamaya. Ishipodanaya. La Sikara. Sutanera Si. Sutaramon Zexikara. Irasitaranea. Irasia Taranea Sata. Lirasia Taranea Po. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we want your miracle power. We want the glory of your presence. 
We want the fellowship of your love and the beauty and the splendor of your nature to be expressed in the midst of our lives. God dwells in the midst of us. Look at how Israel profaned the name of God again and again and again and again. Dear people, rebellion is as witchcraft and stubbornness is idolatry. Sin of idolatry. There's more idolatry going on in the house of God, more self uh, exaltation, idols, idols of pride of life, men exalting themselves and being gods them unto themselves. But never before, we in the perilous times, and it's time we're going to rise up. We're going to rise up. Righteousness and the acts and the conduct of righteousness. I guarantee you, your people, we can shut down. You know, Ruthiana ministered on the Jezebel spirit the other night. We can shut down that Jezebel spirit so quick. And it's in the church. It's been in the church. There is more, there, there is more rebellion that, I mean, that, that crops up in that realm. I mean, we could shut down so much of that stuff just as soon as somebody, if everybody would take a pledge before the Lord that they won't listen to anybody talk bad about anyone else, you rebuke them. I mean, to say, listen, that, shut your trap <laughs> kind of thing, that kind of rebuke. Huh? We don't listen to that garbage. That's foul. That's right out of hell. Who can bring any charge against God's elect? Huh? You got a problem. You go to your brother, you go to your sister, and you rebuke them. Lest you hate them in the heart. That's what God says to do. People just talking bad mouth and stuff, and then especially bad mouth and the anointing. It slimes the place. It slimes the place. It makes the place unclean. It's the spirit of leprosy. Huh? Man, if God's people just start giving themselves to the behavior and the manner on basic principles, hallelujah, of love, basic principles of love and fidelity, most of the problems that are keeping the church from advancing would be shut down just from that one area. Hallelujah. No bad mouth and talk going around my house. No, sir. Shouldn't be around, around your house. Nobody tells me about anybody else's problems. You know why? They're afraid. And they need to be afraid. They ought to be afraid of you too. Huh? There needs to be something bigger than being afraid of the pastor. You need to have the fear of God. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. All, I, all I'm interested in is Jesus' name no longer being profane in the earth. Jesus' name can only be profane through his people. His name cannot be profane through the lost. His name's not profane through those night show hosts. His name's not profane through all those other TV things and and what not, co com comedians or whatever. His names only can be profaned through his church. And when we finally realize that and recognize the places that we're giving an allowance to the enemy to profane the name of Jesus and bring dishonor to him through our lives, we're going to step up, man. We're going to step up. Hallelujah. And so th these things of love and joy and peace and humility, they become great protections. Hallelujah. When you begin to esteem everybody better than yourself, when you begin to walk... Uh, Submission one to another. They have protections for you, you see. And then the enemy can't reach in and grab a hold of you in and, and, and some moment in time and begin to use you against the body of Christ because you're living under the principles of, of these divine dictates of the Holy Ghost that have been written on your heart and in your mind so that you may do them and keep them. Amen. Amen. So let me try to see if I can get done quickly here. So I said, can you, do, can you do church quicker? I said, I will try. Pray for me. I said... I can't. I just have not been able to say it. The first person told me I love him so much. said, well, you know, he said, this floor is really cold. He said, said he said, I got to get some wool socks. He said, I'm going to get some wool socks, and I'm going to get some Under Armour tennis shoes. And <laughs> he'd get all this protective gear to come to the meeting. <laughs> Whatever works. Whatever works. Whatever works. I'm just looking for a, mi a mighty move of God. I'm just expecting a mighty move of God. Somebody said, well, we need to have a mighty man of God in order to have a mighty move of God. You got yourself a mighty man of God right here. Praise God. Amen. And I'm not going to be anything less because that's what he said. Huh? That's what he made me. And you know what? You need to not be anything less either because that's what he made you. Because false humility will try to describe yourself based upon how you perceive yourself. But true humility describes yourself based upon how God describes us and perceives us. What he said about us. What he's made us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Just, I, I pray you get half of this. <laughs> Give all diligence. Look at here.
Give all diligence to add to your faith. Listen to me now. Come on. With faith being the cornerstone, the centerpiece, the centerpiece for the things of the kingdom of God, as it were, the cornerstone for how the gifts of the Spirit operate. He says, now give all diligence, add to your faith, faith, virtue, which is excellence of character. Come on. Come on now. Come on into the school of excellence of character. Come on. Well, where is that school? Holy Ghost school? School of Spirit? Oh, man, I wish Samuel was around. I'd be in his school. Well, look, you got a better one than Samuel. Holy Ghost is here. Oh, I wish, I wish uh, Elijah was around. I'd be in his school. Better than Elijah's here. Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, Jesus actually said that it was better to have the Holy Ghost Spirit, Holy Ghost school than have his school. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble now. Holy Spirit. Jesus said it's expedient for you to go away. That I go away. For if I go not away, the Holy Ghost can't come. And when the Holy Ghost comes, my... He's going to lead you into, and guide you into all truth. He said it's expedient. He's expedient. He made it, he made it as it were better. He made, God, God gave us the best. He didn't give us second best. Jesus went into heaven so the Holy Ghost ministry could take over. Woo! And he's here to teach us how to have excellence of character. You and I just need to count on him. You and I need to give ourselves to his ministry, to his inspiration. You can't sit in front of the TV and look at a bunch of lasciviousness and come under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Does that make sense? Yes. Do I need to break that down? No. You can't sit around sulking because of some problem and come under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. You can't live in a bunch of doubt and fear and come under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Bless my mother. She taught me at a very young age how to deal with fear and problems. I'd come knock on the door and say, Mom, can I sleep with you? I had a bad dream. She said, she'd reach through the door, hand me the Bible, said, put this underneath your pillow, and you will be fine. So a little guy, take the Bible, put it underneath my pillow, and it worked every time. When I got older, it's like, okay, what does the Lord say? Where, I mean, come on, there's a place of strength. There's a place to be strengthened. There's a place of, of divine ability. There's a place to be filled. There's a place to eat. There's, there's a place to, there's a table set before you to sit down and to be, to be well provided for and enriched and strengthened with all the good things of heaven. Do you know where the table is? Can you pull up your chair? Are you comfortable in the kitchen? Do you know where everything's at? When it comes to this fellowship and communion, of eating his flesh and drinking his blood. For me, it is a testimony of that, and, and of the testimony of how we're supposed to live. Jesus said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have eternal life in you. He said, he that eats my bread and drink, eats my flesh and drinks my blood is he that dwelleth in me. And he's called us to come dwell in him. And that is a disposition uh, uh, and a participation of our will. I'm in you. I'm, I'm here in you. I'm all safe. I'm good. I'm, huh? Hallelujah. So living in him, dwelling in him, says I'm to keep myself in love. And even when I'm screaming and hollering at people and rebuking them, I'm in love. Because I'm doing it for a purpose. I'm doing it out of the zeal and the righteousness of my heart. Self-righteousness is to self-justify. That's self-righteousness. I do not self-justify. I'm made righteous by him, and I come under the right, righteous rule of, of his commands and statutes and ordinances. Are you listening to me? Yes. Hallelujah. Does that, somebody said, does that mean you never need to repent? No, I need to repent. There are things that I do wrong. Somebody said, you saying you live perfect? No, I'm not, but I want to be perfect, and that's a whole different disposition of the heart than what many people have today. Are you listening to me? Praise God. However, you listen to this. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, and I'm going to tell you right now, that's walking in the presence of the living God. That's walking in relationship with the living God. That's walking in fellowship with his word, in fellowship with his spirit, because that's how he is in the light. Then we have fellowship one with another. In other words, our fellowship that we now have going on with the Father ultimately reveals is revealed in our fellowship that we have with one another. We say we know the Lord and love him and hate our brother. We liars. We do not do the truth. 
truth. Our walk and our relationship with one another is a direct description of our walk and our relationship with the Father. And if we're there in the light, as He's in the light, and we have fellowship one with another. We're a part of the communion. We're, we're, we're born of the same flesh. We drink out of the same cup of blessing, which is of the Holy Ghost. Then, then, then and there and alone and only there, His blood continues to cleanse us. He would just think that that blood of Jesus Christ is going to cleanse them because they said, oh, forgive me my sin. That's not true. It's not true. It's false doctrine. It's not supported in the Word of God. Amen. There's way too many things associated with true repentance. Amen. The beautiful thing of it is, is you forgive from your heart the way that God, for, if you'll forgive those who trespass against you, then He will forgive you. Hallelujah. And if you say in an honest and sincere heart, Father, I am sorry for this sin. I ask you, and there is a repentance. There's a turning from it. Be you just think that the Lord Jesus is going to wash them in his blood just because they just, uh, you know, flippantly say, forgive me of my sin. It's not true. There's requirements. And many of the people who are constantly perpetual backsliders, constantly living in and out of sin, they got a lot of unforgiveness in their heart. It's part of the problem. And if you don't forgive from your heart, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. And whatever mercy you show, that's the mercy Father's going to show you. Hallelujah. I hope your mercy account's big. I hope your forgiveness account is huge. The fact of it is, you can't forgive unless there's mercy, and you can't have mercy unless there's love. Because love, out of love flows mercy, and out of mercy flows forgiveness. People who are bitter and hold on to things and have attitudes and not walk in the love of God, I can say, I can pray. They can pray 24 hours a day. They can do their religious thing. They can quote the whole Bible backwards. Huh? They, can quote, they can quote every single, every single letter in the Bible. There's people who practice it. There's brilliant minds in, in the Orthodox Jewish community. They're brilliant minds when it comes to knowing the Scripture. And profiting them nothing. Because all it is about their whole God, their whole God is the, is the Scripture. And their, 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 their knowledge of the Scripture and their ability to, you know, mentally do the things that they do. If you don't walk in love, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Holy Ghost tongues. You ever hear anybody, you ever hear anybody speaking in heavenly language or praying in heavenly language and it's aggravating? That's tinkling symbols because they don't have love. They've got unforgiveness in their spirit. They got complaint. They got sin. They got sin held to their account. Dear people, I'm just talking to you about the protection of giving yourself to godliness, to giving yourself to the life of God, this life that is in Christ Jesus, the very life of God, the very life of Jesus, the very life of the Holy Ghost. By definition, by nature, it is righteousness. And so the Lord says, give all diligence to add to your faith, add to it excellence of character, add to your excellence of character, knowledge. What knowledge? The knowledge of the Word of God. The knowledge of the Lord. To, the, to your knowledge, temperance. To temperance, patience. Patience? Who has time for patience? <laughs> we got a lot of work to do here. I mean, that used to be my motto. Patience? No, there's, you misunderstand. There's some misunderstanding about the concept of patience because we're in too big of a hurry to get too many things done. And the Lord helped me understand. No, 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 no. No, you get patient. You wait on me. And just wait for me and you just listen for me and then I'll use you. Just don't try to make anything up. Just wait for me. Just listen to me and I'll use you. I was cleaning a horse pen, scooping what we call scooping poop in a horse pen. And the Spirit of the Lord says, you're going to go to the nation of Nepal. I'm going to shake a nation. What a place. I wasn't on my knees fasting and praying, although I spent many, time, many hours on my knees fasting and praying. Lord said, I'm going to take you to shake a nation. And then within 24 hours, everything had been, within 48 hours, things had been lined up. Within 48 hours, within 48 hours of the Lord telling me this, it was all proven. Within 48 hours, within 24 hours, a person who never came to my house before came to my house and said, what's going on? Why am I here? Basically, I said, oh, I don't know. I'm glad you're here. Come on in, have some coffee. Uh, I believe the Lord said to me to Nepal. Nepal, I know somebody in Nepal. I gave me a telephone number. I called the person in Nepal, and the person in Nepal said, why would the Lord send you to Nepal? I said, uh, I don't know, ask him. I just left it there. I wasn't, I just say, you know, I, you know I'm, and, um, pastor, I'm Reverend Pastor Dr. Mark uh, Spitzbergen. 
over here in America and been pastoring for a thousand years. And <laughs> I say nothing. Had mighty signs and wonders of God. We shake this and that and the other thing. I just said, I just was really, it was kind of dry and dull and said like, you know, I'm coming to Nepal. You know, so-and-so gave me a telephone number. Why are you coming? Well, because the Lord's sending me, basically. That night, God visited him in a dream. And the next morning, he called me up and said, who are you? I said, I'm Mark. <laughs> and I'm coming to Nepal. God does that. It's just what he does. You don't, to be, you, don't have to be, you don't have to be anybody but, his, but somebody in him. You don't, have anybody, you don't have to be anybody among men. Huh? I mean, I had so many people wanted to go with me. T.L. Osborne wanted to go. Mike Francis wanted to go. Tim Hall wanted to go. There was a list of great men of God wanted to go. And every one of them couldn't go. Tim actually got his, bought his tickets. Tim actually bought his ticket and was paralyzed in the bed. Ask him. He's going to be here at the end of the month. Ask him. He was paralyzed. He was paralyzed. He could not get up to go to the airport. God paralyzed him. He could not move. When the Lord wants to do something, he's got a way of getting it done. Huh? Pretty amazing, huh? Father wants to use you. I'm saying God wants to use you. You're going to have to get over here in the place of the school of the Spirit and come and understand the disposition of, uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the callings of the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can begin now to be developed by Him in such a way to move in those kinds of faith, to move in that kind of faith, to move in that kind of the demonstration of the Spirit. So give all diligence. Give all diligence to the Lord training you. These are going to be protections against all those things that would otherwise work within you, that which would hold you back. So it's going to go through this. He said also to temperance, patience, to patience, godliness. Here we go. Godliness. What is godliness? What is godliness? Does anybody know what godliness is? Does anybody dare to venture to say what godliness is? Eusebio. What is, does anyone dare to venture to acting like God? Conduct and character of God. Well, good thing you started off with the fact that we've got the divine nature. So he's going to talk about his nature. And he says, godliness is give brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness, divine love. Now, people, you just can't skip over them. It's just like, okay, today we're working on, what are we working on? Today. Huh? I mean, you, I mean just like we pick a day. What is, what is Monday? What is, miracle Monday. Mar Monday's a miracle Monday. You start saying that for a while, I'm going to tell you right now, you start getting miracles on Monday. We get, we get, certain events happening on days on dates of the month for us because we've sanctified them what's tuesday tongues of fire. tongues of fire tuesday we set things aside to the lord we set things in place in order with with divine purposes what is wednesday wonderful, wonderful works wednesday what's thursday Come on, I mean, come on. You, what is your day about? How does your life live? What things are you putting into place in your life that says, okay, what are we working on today? If you were going to be, uh, uh, if you were trying to be a, a, an, a, an Olympic athlete, I'm telling you, you're working on something every day for about 10 hours. The Lord says, give all diligence. What are we working on today? Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to do a couple hours of patience. <laughs> well, put in it, we're going to put on a good, strong, uh, you know, hour and a half of godliness. I mean, no, we're just giving ourselves to things of the Spirit. Saying, look, we are not going to have in our life things that don't look like love and brotherly and kindness. We're not going to have a bunch of complaints. I don't have a complaint day. I don't have com venting Monday. Telling, giving people a piece of my mind Tuesdays. <laughs> you can't afford that kind of stuff. You can't afford a day of doubt. You can't afford a day of doubt and unbelief. It produces, it produces months and maybe even years of disaster. Just spend all your blessing. Just opening up your mouth and just having an, an, uh, an emotional dump. <laughs> Help us, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I try to get graphic here. Hello.
Help us, Lord Jesus. Am I, am I making myself clear? Yes. Oh, yes. To write, to write a guy, oh, yes. Oh, yes. What's Friday? What's Saturday? Signs of Wonder Saturday. Some people, it's Saturation Saturday. And it's a great day to set apart, just saturate in the Word of God, prayer. Amen. What, is, what are days meaning? What seconds mean to you? What do minutes mean to you? What do hours mean to you? Huh? What does your life mean to you? Huh? Commune with your own heart. Apply your heart to wisdom so that you may number your days. Amen? Come on now. Dear people, come on now. Let's quit living our life flippantly for ourselves and acting like we're serving God. The Lord's called us into a place of measurable deny ourselves. Quit acting like a, a bunch of human beings. Huh? Get on. Huh? Come on over here. Stop knowing each other after the flesh. And let's get over here into this realm of walking in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Start acting like a bunch of saints. Those who are heirs and join heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. Heirs of God, join heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who are seated with the Lord in the heavenly realm. Those who are living out a divine purpose. Who are being trained for great things. I'm being trained for great things. I'm being trained for something far greater than being a president. I'm being trained for something, so are you, for something, something far better than being the king of the world. Huh? I'm being trained to represent the Lord Jesus Christ in every dimension in my life. And so are you. Amen. You, the Lord hasn't given any of us a just like kind of menial task. Oh, you just keep the floor swept. You, you just keep the doors locked. And you just clean the bathrooms. Or whatever. God's called you to greatness. Wow. Quit acting like a human being. <laughs> That's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He said, quit acting like a human being. He said, quit acting like a mere man. That's what he said. Should I read it to you? You know where the scripture is, right? Quit acting. Don't you know who you are? I'm going to read it. First Corinthians chapter 3. For ye are, ye are, for ye are yet carnal. For where there is among you envy and strife and division, are you not carnal and walk as human beings, mere men? Nonsense. This is not who we are. This is not who we are. You and I are called to live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. You and I are called, we've given access. And we've been given access into the holies of holies, unto Him, into a heavenly realm by the Holy Spirit. There is absolutely no reason for us to live and depend upon our own mind, live and depend upon our own efforts, our own strength. There's no reason for us to have to live under the defeat of some poverty-stricken mentality where you've barely got enough money to get by just because you're constantly griping and complaining. Start giving thanks, amen. Start praising Him. Huh? Start touching heaven. Get up in the morning, touch heaven. Put your value in heaven. Oh, I wish I had more of this. Oh, I wish I had more of that. Yeah. That'll ruin you. You want more of heaven, the true riches. Yes. The true riches. Yes. Yes. Whew. Yes. Whew. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He who is rich became poor for our sake that through his poverty we might be made rich. Yes. We've been given the wealth of heaven. Yes. We've been given yes. pleasures that no one in this world can even begin to comprehend. That are at his right hand. Let's come be taught of God. Let's come be taught of the Lord. What is the Lord teaching us? To abide in him or to dwell in him. So the Lord says, come dwell in me. Come live by me. Hallelujah. Come fellowship with me. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ tonight. That every single person in this place. You will find what I, that realm that I am talking about. Of being in him and living in him. Because once you do, you'll never go out anymore. 
I pray tonight in the name of Jesus, those who have been stuck in a ditch of religion and all they've known is the ritual of doing and the unthankfulness of being dissatisfied. You'll come into a relationship with God in such a way that where nothing else even matters but heaven anymore. Nothing even matters but His presence. That's all that matters to you. When you got His presence, I tell you right now, you've got everything. And it won't be long till it's proven in so many different ways. Tokosi kananeatea. Stokamonde yapai. I'm going to say this one last verse of Scripture. I, I know that I know that some of you got to get up really early in the morning. I recognize that. And I'm telling you, for some of you have to get up really early. I, I get up early too, and I just pray for you, Father. Strengthen them. Father, we just thank you that they, they esteemed your word, your things, your, your house more important than whether or not they got another hour's sleep. There's got to be a breakthrough. Breakthrough is going to come through waiting on God. People say, give me a break. You don't need a break. You need a breakthrough. <laughs> let us have a break. No, let's let us have a breakthrough. Let us wait right here. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> now, here's a shocking, here's a shocking statement. I just need to make it. Here's a shocking statement. Here's a shocking statement as everybody's looking with lofty eyes at such a high goal of, Excellence of character. Then Peter comes out with this. Anyone, <laughs> he said, if anybody lacks these things, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, time out. I, I thought you just said give diligence <laughs> to develop. And now he says, anybody who lacks this, he's just talking to us about the availability of that which God has resourced us with. All it's got to be is activated. All it's got to be is participated with. He's there to not only will it, but to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody who lacks this is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged. 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 From the former self. <laughs> Purged. Hallelujah. Purged. Sokan. Ekta. Kita. Tota. Maxi. Kishapa. Purged. Hallelujah. From his sins. All of his sins. All of his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will not stumble. It doesn't say fall, stumble. And the words are clearly defined for us in Romans chapter 9, where both words are used right together in the same verse scripture. You won't even stumble. None of your steps will. You won't even slip. I think stumble is a little worse than slip. There's slip, there's stumble, there's fall. You won't even slip. That's right. That's right. We need to give heed to the word. That's what Geneva just said in the spirit. We need to give heed to the word. She said something like, Satuka mana suntomba. But I heard, and you need to give word, you need to give heed to the word. You need to give heed to the word. People listen, but you're not justified by listen. You're justified by doing, saying, I'm going to do this. Okay, how do I do it? We described to you the problem, the things that would hold you back. We described to you the solution. We described to you the empowerment. It's not less, it's not about your strength and your doing and your, your ability. It's a diligence with respect to a participation. Say, there's a one word I want you to grab a hold of, and the word is? Participation. Just try it one more time all together now. Participate. Just participate. Participate with the Holy Ghost. Just tell them. Just get up and say, Holy Spirit, I would like to participate with you today. <laughs> I'll I just tell you, like I said earlier, I, I, I had a breakthrough. I had a breakthrough. I, discri I discovered that if you ask Father according to His will, He'll do it. 
I discovered that if I say, Father, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil, that it's just a totally different life. Just do it. Just participate with the word. It's real simple. It's not, it's not abstract. It's real simple. It's real basic. It's real childlike. It's real, it's real followers of Jesus Christ. But he says, listen, I want you to hear about this. I want you to hear about this. I want you to listen to this. Listen to this. Listening to me? If you give yourself to this disposition, saying, okay, Lord, I will to do your will. I want your life revealed in me. I set my affections on things above, not on things of this earth. For I'm dead. My, cry, my life is hid with you, uh, Lord God, in Christ Jesus. He said, okay, here's what I'm going to do to you. I'm going to minister to you. I'm going to give you the spirit of, wisdom, spirit of wisdom and revelation. In other words, I'm going to minister to you something. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to describe something. I'm going to come to you. And I'm going to show you how to come in. I'm going to show you how to participate with the miracle realm. I'm going to show you how to participate with the heavenly realm. I'm ministering to you in a but. I'm going to minister to you at entrance. I'm going to minister to you super abundantly. In other words, I'm going to minister to you in every dimension of how to move in the heavenly realm and heavenly authority and divine power and all the works of the living God. If, if you'll do these things, if you'll stay in this disposition... He will minister to you an entrance into this wonderful, everlasting, eternal kingdom that you and I are a part of right now. Jesus said, if I cast out devils and work miracles by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit, then the kingdom of God has come to you. Jesus, Jesus was living constantly, interacting in heaven. I've, I've watched a number of different people. I've watched them. I've lived with them, slept in the same rooms with them, traveled with them, and, and know them inside and out. And watch them at any moment step into a realm of heaven. And when they step over in that, heaven, in that heavenly realm, the whole atmosphere changes. It is purposely, and they know exactly what they're doing. God showed them an entrance, ministered to them an entrance. Step over in this realm. Right, just step right over here. It's like reaching your hand out, and it goes over into a whole other realm. It's like you can just you can access something over there. It's far better. And when you do that, when you're when when you will let God do that, all of a sudden you'll know how to get the things that you have need of. Huh? He's going to minister to us all that we have need of. He's going to supply all that we have need of. There's an access to the anointing. Okay, Lord. Okay, Lord. I need, a, I need a miracle right now for my wife. She injured her back playing tennis. So I reach over into that realm and the anointing, as it were, just understand this, as it were, it's a disposition. It's an it's a, it's a, a ability to cooperate with the Holy Spirit that we're trained in. And tongues is an entrance gift into it, but it's more than that. We can see little tidbits, uh, tidbits of it, little snippets of it in different people's life. Like Smith Wigglesworth said, I've never prayed more than 15 minutes, but I've never gone 15 minutes without praying. Put that in your calculator. Find, found a realm. Stepped into baptism of the Holy Ghost when he was th just uh, 51, I believe it was. But he didn't spend his life fighting the Holy Ghost. He just didn't. They didn't know anything about that realm. And after spending a couple of weeks arguing with everybody, telling them it wasn't of God, he stepped into that and found out it was of God. And everything began to be different in his life. You and I were so blessed here tonight. Because Father showed us the things in our life that's going on that's preventing us. Some people are sad because they don't want to change. I don't think there's anyone in here mad tonight. Sometimes there are people here mad. I could say sad, mad, and glad. Mad? Because you're Pharisee. So I don't have any mad people at me tonight. Got some sad people. Because they're just always wrong. Just can't ever get it right. Yeah, that's right, and you never will. With that attitude, you never will. You just might as well sell, spell your name with a big L. Because that's the way you are. That's who you are, and that's what you're going to be. Okay, you surrender your life over to Jesus, and then you're going to have victory. 
to where you stop living your own life and doing it your own way and now give yourself over to the kingdom of God, everything will change. Hallelujah. Isn't it good? Somebody's going to tell you the truth. Notice I'm not a politician. I speak with all plainness of speech. I asked the Lord to open my mouth. It caused me to understand how to make known the gospel as I ought. Amen. I'm telling you, listen to me. You're going to lay hold on the power of God and start executing it. You're going to start moving in signs, wonders, and miracles. You're not going to have anything less than everything that the script described in the Bible. And if it looks like it's less, you don't believe it. I don't believe nothing except for what God said. I made up my mind. I don't believe nothing except for what Father said. I don't believe nothing and nobody except for what Father said. I accept nothing except for what Father gives. We've been in situations over and again where, where, where we had to have tens of thousands of dollars. Tens of thousands. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And have none of it. And have any of it. And then offering came in. The Lord said, give it, give it to so-and-so. And we go, church, and anybody who watches our books knows that I'm telling you the truth. You go home and this thing start eating at you. Thank you, Father, for your love. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. It's not mine. It's not my issue. It's Father's. It's Father, you're good. We love you. When we were young in the spirit and these things in faith, we would just simply say, here's how we how we'd shut it all down. Let's just say, let's just watch what Father will do. Just leave it. Don't even think about it. Just watch what Papa will do. And then, you know, we, we mature, we grew in, in the anointing, you know, to where that those harassing, tormenting things come try to mess with us, just shut them down. You foul spirit, shut up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, I get mean with the devil. I get mean, man. I'm, I'm mean with the devil. Wake up the next morning. Miracle. Not an offering. Miracle. Sometimes offering. Just a miracle. I mean, you just, I like to sometimes quantify it like that because, just quantitate it like that because I know how much people are tossed over finances. Don't be tossed no more. Father said, give no thought. I, when his father said, give no thought, I said, Lord, will you please teach me how? Here's, here's a great dialogue. Lord, please teach me how to give no thought. Instead of trying to figure out how to give no thought. Lord, Holy Spirit, would you show me how not to give any thought to those things which are most important to us in preserving our life? He says, sure. Raise your hands. Lift your hands towards heaven. Now watch this. I'm going to cause you to forget about everything on earth. <laughs> it's true, eh? I'm going to cause you to forget about everything on earth. And as soon as you do, miracles. I'll work a miracle. Miracles. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 My daughter, Allie, has on her little uh, notebook, says, if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. If your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. I'm shaking in my boots, man. I'm trembling. Hey? I want to I wanna, I wanna believe God for those things that are humanly impossible. It would take God to pull them off. That's all I'm going to move in. That's all I'm going to do. And we're doing it. We're not waiting for another day. We're doing it. We're laying our heart and our hand to it every single day. We're going to see it happen. We're going to send, we're going to send missionaries. More missionaries than could even be imagined to the unreached people groups. From this time until Jesus' time. Until Jesus comes.
Father is allowing us to build something that is going to last. I began to say to the Lord 30 years ago, Father, some of you were around. Ann was around, heard me say this. Some of you were around. Father, use me to build something that will last 200 years. All I did was graduate it a little bit and say, Lord, use me to build something that will last till Jesus comes. And the Lord began to seed me with the unreached people groups. And then he began to show me, gave me tokens to show me what he would do through our lives. We would just believe him. When we, uh, when we had the impossible event of getting the national stadium in Kathmandu, Nepal, and I had Sudeep go so many times and ask them again, ask them again, ask them again, ask them again. He said, look, pastor, they're going to probably beat me up. He said this, they're probably going to beat me up. These men aren't like you guys in America. I said, well, what, you, what are you saying? He said, okay, I'm going. And then he calls me up. And I was on the road with a friend of mine. He calls me up and he said, they just said, yeah. But they want 50,000 U.S. dollars now. We were minus 30 in the hall here in, in San Diego. And I was spending money right, left, and center doing the things I was doing. Ha! I said, go back and tell them we're going to send them 25,000. See if that's good enough. It will be. And I didn't have 25,000. But we already knew. The Lord said, don't go back to Nepal until you get the national stadium. So I knew he was going to do it. I want, you, I want you to just enjoy relationship with the Lord so you can do that. I want you to just learn how to do that. I want you to learn how to do it on every level. And I want you to understand, it starts with, Lord, I want love flowing out of me. Lord, I feel like punching this guy in the face. But I want you to fill me with your love. Lord, I feel like fall, calling fire down on these folks. Because I think they deserve it. But Lord, I want you to fill me with love. Because that's where it started. Father, you see that I am being attracted to this demonic, unholy thing called the lust of the flesh. Now, I ask you to give me the purity of heart to hate it. Amen. I mean, fundamental stuff like that. Get tra Somebody say, got to be transparent. With God, you certainly do. Because he ain't messing up with no foul make-believe. You got to be truthful with him. Father, this thing's pulling on me now. Give me the capacity to hate it like you do. Give me the capacity to see what is really behind this thing. And as you do, you'll begin to participate with God in another dimension. Huh? It's a disposition. It's a disposition that results in another dimension. I'll minister an entrance into you. I'll minister an entrance to you abundantly. Huh? When my dad was a young man, he was around another preacher who was moving in signs, wonders, and miracles, and he got a glimpse of another dimension. And what he did is he jumped in and he started just doing the same thing with the preacher. And he stepped in into another dimension. He saw it modeled. I mean, just imagine the early church. It was being modeled for them all around them. Wow, what an atmosphere of faith. Here we are, people. We're living in perilous times. It's time for us to lay hold on, to take a hold of that, that, that light, precious faith. Of Jesus Christ in every dimension, not just one. And then watch Watch as we change culture. Watch as we change culture of the church. Watch as we begin to move in such a way that all of a sudden, business begins to serve ministry instead of ministry serving business. Amen. Watch. Just watch it. Just come on, man. Just stand up. See it. Let God show it to you. Throw your heart in on this thing. You didn't say you, got nothing, you don't have anything to do? i tell you right now. I got 15 things for you to do. Just let me know. We'll put you to work. Amen. Amen. So you just join hands with me right now. Just cross this room. Just join hands with the person right by you. Just join hands with me right now. Just join hands with me right now. Just join hands with me. Let's, let's just feel and see ourselves joining hands together with God. Okay? I want you to see and feel yourself joining hands with God. Those that, are on the, those that are on the road, join hands. Join hands. Just stretch out there a little bit. 
I want you to join hands with God. I want to get you in the work. I want you to get, I want to get you, I want to get you on the job. Guys, we want to get you on the job. We want to get you on the job. We want you to quit living your own life. We want you to start living this life of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the living God. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the divine power. We thank you for the divine grace. We thank you that you've given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. We thank you for the working of your mighty power in our life. Father, we thank you for that dimensions of faith that go beyond anything we've ever thought of or anything that's ever been seen or demonstrated in the earth. And Father, we pray tonight in Jesus' name that everybody in this place will so lay hold on the divine opportunities, the unlimited divine opportunities that you've given to us. And we will not occupy ourselves any longer with the mediocrity of this earth and of our own existence. But rather live your life. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for divine capacity. Father, we thank you for the divine capacity to fully represent you. The divine capacity to receive all that you're supplying and not go without that which you have already given. Father, we thank you for it in every dimension of life. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, Financially, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you. I thank you right now for strengthening every person in here by your spirit and their inner being. For, Lord, being made strong by you is the capacity by which we will do those things which you've asked us. Now I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be strengthened. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, be strengthened. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to be strengthened. I command you in the name of Jesus be strengthened. I command you in Jesus' name to be strengthened. I want everybody to please stand with me. You know, I, I'm telling you, I, I'm going to just let you understand it the way it is. I truly believe in preaching and ministering until heaven invades the place until heaven invades the room and for me sometimes I think that that takes four or five six hours maybe and for me I'm willing to do that and I just ask father for his miracle grace and provision because we understand that that you have to get up and go to work in the morning but I want you to understand that a move of God must take place in your life. An encounter with God must take place in your life. For these great changes in the spirit to be realized through your life. So I'm asking Father for special miracles here tonight. I'm just asking Father for a special act of divine power and grace. That every person, no matter who you are, no matter, maybe you've lived in doubt and unbelief more than you lived in faith. But from this day forward, you're going to live in faith. More than doubt and unbelief. You're going to start giving yourself to believing God. You're going to start believing, giving yourself. I believe the first thing, the first step towards living in faith is just living full of thanksgiving. And that thanksgiving ministers unto faith. Before long, you're moving in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're calling the gift of faith and calling those things into existence as the Lord gives the divine unction and inspiration. In Jesus' name. I speak to your physical body and I command every one of you to be healed right now. In Jesus' name, I command pain go out of your body. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, broken relationships, I break the power of broken relationships. Right now in the name of Jesus, Satan, I command you go and leave off your lion. Right now in the name of Jesus, 
Father, I thank you for the working power of divine authority in the lives of your people that each one will know how to submit to authority and function in the authority as well. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you give favor. I command favor right now and blessings. I command in Jesus' name divine favor right now for that prosperity that Father has ordained. Blessings now. Inheritance right now. Income right now. Provision right now. Father so dedicated to us believing that as Isaiah said to Ahaz, ask for a sign, whatever it takes, so that you can believe. For unless you believe, you can never be established. Father is so dedicated to you and I believing these things. That he'll prove himself to you even in a greater way. If you'll just give him the opportunity. So that he can strengthen you and build faith in your life. So that you can believe for greater things. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha. Hallelujah. Sikaya na manjaya patona. Sikaya na mochapai na sikaya. Sikaya na masataya na masikiki. Sikaya na masikaya na masikai tiki na mokushika. Sikaya na masikaya taka ni makasikuto kusia. Whatever it is that you need, whatever it is that you desire in God, receive it right now. Whatever it is that you need to be strengthened in, in the realms of the things that belong to heaven. Father, has it for you right now. Right now in Jesus' name. I'm asking Father for an explosion of His glory and grace through your life. I'm asking Father that you'll be able to see more clearly than ever before. The spirit of wisdom and revelation will so, in, so engulf your life, so overwhelm your life that in every dimension of your existence, heaven will be there. Heaven, Christ Jesus will be there. And I know the Father's going to answer my prayer and has answered it already. Hallelujah. I know that Father is going to fully bring these things to pass in your life. So long as you're willing. Amen. 
Come worship the Lord with your tithes and with your offerings and with your giving. If there's anybody in here you need prayer for anything, we're here to pray with you and for you. We know the Lord will touch you and strengthen you in whatever you need. Those of you that need to go, I want you to understand you're free to go. Find people around you, hug them, bless them, tell them that you love them. In Jesus' name. Uh -huh. Here, listen to this. Listen to this. The Lord says, I... <laughs> I recommend mm. that you buy of me gold tried in the fire, lest you find yourself poor, blind, wretched, naked, and miserable, mm. all of the above. And, and we can't do anything except by faith. Without faith, it is actually impossible to please him, not just difficult. We have to come into a place of great faith in the Lord. Um, he, he put me, he put this on me today, and it's been building and growing, and I have a, a whole stack of scriptures that he's given me that I didn't think of, but uh, you can ask me for those later. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's uh, good. This is good. This is good. Should, I, 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 I can feel this. It feels good. <laughs> so he says, fear not, little flock. For it is the Father's great pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. Great pleasure. Woo! It doesn't have to just be your pleasure. You have to have faith that he is your friend. He said, Abraham, my yeah. friend. Mm -hmm. He said, He mm -hmm. says, I'm going to walk with you as a friend. Mm -hmm. He says, Christ says, you're going to be your older brother. Yeah. He's like your elder brother. <laughs> he said, you're going to be built up in one body with him, in him and him and you. He says, you're going to be my son and, I'll, and not mm. just a servant any longer. Right. And there's a whole identity Beautiful. to walk into. That's not just servant to a, a God that is no different than Molech who demands things of you and then you just try to please him and try to duck when he shows up. Kind of right. Thing, you know, <laughs> like exactly. All the, so it, it, it's, a, it's a realm of faith where, where it's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom yeah. and not just you trying to work up. Come to on, it. man. And it's a place of faith where we have, when we pray, it needs to be genuine. If you're praying the scripture out of obedience, that's a good place to start. Right. It's a very good place to start. But there has to come a place where it's alive. Otherwise, you don't have that faith that pleases him. It's just impossible to, to sit there religiously forever. You have to move, you have to move on at some point. That's just, that's just that's wisdom right. there. Otherwise, you are poor, blind, naked, wretched, and miserable. That's right. Forget that. Exactly. So, so I don't want any of that, and I hope nobody else wants some of that. Nah, so if you nah. Were, so I, I feel like the Lord's saying this. If you have need of faith for anything going on in your life, I'm not even just going to break it down to, the, to small things like finances, but I'm saying someone who wants to move forward and sees himself is someone who is a, a once in a generation type of man or woman. Someone, Come on. Someone who's going to, I'm serious about this. I'm with you, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm feeling it. Father's I'm serious. serious too. I'm, I'm with serious. you. People who look at themselves and say they're, they're going to look back and whenever and be like, are you kidding me? There was, that was a once in a generation person and we got 30 out of the abiding place. What was that? So, so, so <laughs> Lord, Jesus. Yes. Yes, Lord. So if you need an increase in faith in anything, if it's the smallest thing, if you want to see the Lord as your friend, as your master, as even your older brother, as your father, and as the love of your life, Please just come up. We're, can we all just pray together for, the, yeah. for an increase yeah. in faith in everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yes. it, it should it shouldn't be a thing where, where we we go to work and we're like, uh, I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to be here. Or I think the Lord brought me here, and I'm just not sure. And like, can you please do more? You, you know, it, it's a realm of faith good, where man. I am positive He put me here. That is I'm good. I'm just gonna rejoice until it's over, and I know that all things will work together for the good of those that love Him. And He's mm -hmm. not gonna just leave me out to dry. Right. So can we all press in for more faith? Amen. I want you to just pray. I want you to pray right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for faith that builds us up as a church knit together in one body. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. We can all move forward and move into a greater relationship and not just people that pray religiously, people that bring offerings because we're hoping yes. to get more finances the next month, people that aren't just going to question where God put them and why he put them there, but they're going to say, I'm here because you put me there and there's no other place I'm supposed yes. to be. 
or any other thing I'm supposed to be doing. I'm here because I'm growing in faith. And without that, it's impossible to please him. So why play pretend like we are pleasing him yeah. if we aren't growing in faith? So please, build us up, Lord. <laughs> build us up in truth, <laughs> in maturity. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Powerful. Let me just let me just say this. I'm going to say this. That kind of talking, that kind of speaking, that kind of declaration comes from giving yourself to the word and giving yourself over to a place of saying, "Father, you're in me and I'm in you, so use me. It's just real simple. Just do it. Don't make it complicated. <laughs> Amen. Anybody who's, anybody who's feeling confined to a prison of inability and condemnation and uncertainty, be liberated now in Jesus' name. Anybody who's lived in fear and doubt and unbelief, just be liberated. You don't have to go through a healing process. It is an instantaneous miracle of grace for you. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you, I, I believe it. More than 30. I just believe every one of you. A unique and special event and one, that's one in a generation. Hallelujah. And everybody in this place. Amen. Because that's what fathers ordain. Hallelujah. Well, amen. Amen. Well, we love all of you. We love you. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Father, let the rain of heaven fall. Let your glory flow from me. Let your anointing break every yoke. Let our shadow heal people tomorrow. Let our words bring life and deliverance. Father, we pray that every person move in the boldness of faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hug, hug everybody. Tell them that you love them. Bless them.